Okay, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's your buddy Uncle Bruce here. And um, I want to welcome you to my channel, Stock Markets with Bruce. Coming to you live this morning from uh, Palm Desert, California. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It's Monday, March the 18th, 2024. And uh, thank you for, for joining me today. Um, I've been racking my brain. Uh, I got to tie up, be honest with you. I've been racking my brain since uh, Friday night. I, I was, I was thinking I got to make a video, you know, I got to, I should make a video for the, for the, for the good of my channel and to, to, to bring more viewers in and help with the analytics and, you know, all the right things t for YouTube. And I, 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 I tell you 48 hours of this and, uh, I came to the conclusion, uh, <laughs> screw that. Uh, I'm not doing that. Um, I had nothing to say. <laughs> I was thinking about this going, well, what, what, what am I going to tell you? What, what am I going to make a video about? Um, am I going to repeat what I love about SoFi again? Am I going to repeat the same damn message? No, I'm exhausted. Uh, Monday to Friday, I work my butt off for you guys. And I want to give you the best I've got to give. And I want to help you become richer in the market. And I don't want you to make stupid mistakes. And I'm thinking, well, what, what am I going to say on Saturday or Sunday that's going to make you any smarter? It's just going to, I'm just going to exhaust myself working hours to make a video for no reason. And I'm watching YouTube, you know, Friday and Saturday. And, Sunday, and all these other YouTubers are making videos one after the other after the other. I have a I have analytics here from YouTube, which is really, really handy. It tells me everything about my channel. And it also tells me what other channels you guys like to watch. It, it kind of says, oh, your followers follow these channels as well. And I see 15 of them. And I always have a list of 15. It, it changes from time to time. And I, and so I know who they are. I, I, I know these other guys. It's, they're good people. Um, and I'm thinking they're, they're cranking out content. They're just cranking out a video, another video, but they have nothing to say, really. They've covered everything. They do a good job Monday to Friday. They've got nothing else to talk about. So now they're guessing what's going to happen on Monday. That, that's what's, what's what they're down to now. I mean, if you don't have anything to say about SoFi that's new, and you've already talked about what happened to SoFi all this week because you're on every day anyway with a video and some of them are live and some of them are not. What are you going to do on Saturday and Sunday? There's no breaking news from SoFi this weekend. They, you know, Noto probably had a day off. He, he needs a damn day off too. And or they're in team meetings planning their next big move and God bless them for it. But in any event, I had nothing that I wanted to say. <laughs> And I thought, this is a good thing. You need this time off. You could use a break. You should take a break. And uh, so I get some nap time in. And whatever. I napped enough. Uh, uh, evidently, I napped enough so that this morning when I, I have my alarm set for 3.30 Pacific time to wake up, I was up at 1.30 today, wide awake, ready to go. <laughs> and I'm just killing myself going, oh, come on, man. You got two more hours. You can sleep. For two more hours. What a gift. What, what a gift. No one is expecting you to be awake at 1.30 in the morning. So, you know, go back to sleep and relax. I, I tried. Believe me, I tried. The problem is that when, in my age now, at this late late stage in my, uh, my uh, latter stage of my life, it's not like I'm near death's door, but at 68, it doesn't work that way. Uh, during the day, I can pop down for an hour, no problem at all, <laughs> which my dad used to tell me, you should take a nap, young man, and I'd look at my dad going, you're crazy. Uh, now I can do a nap in the afternoon any old time, but uh, in the middle of the evening, for whatever reason, when it's dark out, nothing going on, can't sleep. It's just, a, it's the opposite. It's a George Costanza, uh, you know, thing. It's ridiculous. Uh, I don't want to take pills to sleep or anything like that not interested. So here we are. I'm alive. I'm well. I'm up. I've been up for hours and I've been watching the markets and trying to figure out what to talk to you about and see what's going on. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I uh, hope you haven't left yet. Uh, if you're new to this channel, uh, what I try and do is explain the markets in plain English. That's my number one thing. Just tell you what's going on, what it means, 
what does this mean for us? Why should we give a crap in plain English? And the second thing I do uh, that has really caught on here is I try to turn people from being gamblers and guessing what the market is going to do and hoping that they're right and praying that they got the right stock this time at the right time. I have turned people to become, I've turned people into becoming option writers, writing options to make money from the sap stupid enough to gamble on options and um, make enough money to perhaps even quit your day job and become a full-time option writer as a living wherever in the world you want to be. And whether you want to be in your little town or little city, your big city, your apartment, your condo, your your parents' basement, wherever you're living, uh, you're in an RV, uh, you're traveling the world uh, for a two-year trip, and you're out in the outback right now in uh, in Australia, and you occasionally get internet through your satellite dish or something, or you're traveling in Thailand, or you're in Europe, or wherever you are, as long as you have something of this nature in your hot little hand, you likely have the ability to be in touch with your money and your account and the ability to trade your options. And if you're doing it right, you've already figured it out. I uh, haven't hung around here since 2021. You've taken my classes and hung out with this gang of regulars every day. Ye long ago, long ago, figured it out that, oh, yeah, yeah, I <coughs> I quit my day job uh, with, with in less than a year of hanging around with this guy and uh, i just write options for a living now and my whole world is is upside down i used to think about buying stock or options and praying i could make a couple of thousand bucks or take 500 and turn it into a thousand or take three grand and turn it into 10 grand so I, I need a fast hit i need a hit and i need to be able to turn that money and knock off my credit card or or help with whatever I got to do or the damn car needs a new transmission and they quoted 1500 which is ridiculous but I got to come up with it. I've turned you around now and you're going oh 1500 we, we need a new transmission or we need work done on the car for $1,500 oh well I could write $10 50 uh, cash secured puts on this or we could do a I could do a credit spread and uh, I, I can do a, I can do credit spreads that bring in $300 a, a spread per position I need to do five of those, so I'll do six of them. I'll bring in 1800 bucks and grab 1500 of that and get the car fixed. And uh, the position is a one-month position, so, you know, in the next four weeks, these 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 puts or calls, whatever I've done the credit spread on, will shrink out, and, and I'll buy them back for 200 bucks. And uh, thank you very much. I kept 300 in the account, so there's, you know, 300 or less is what I'll buy them back for, and I'll write another set of contracts. Every once in a while, something else comes up. Oh, yeah, we need a... We got a, we got the furnace is on the fritz, so the air conditioning isn't working, or uh, the toilets are backed up, or or whatever. And um, we're going on a trip. We want to go on a holiday. Uh, we need money for the flights. Uh, we got to reserve our hotel, and whatever. Uh, you start thinking in contracts. You start thinking about writing contracts, and you start going, well, yeah, if we write those at five and buy them back at two, that's three hundred dollars profit per contract times twenty contracts, six thousand dollars. What do we need that six grand for again? Oh, yeah, we're going to do this and that and the other thing. Um, the first thing you think about is how much do we need to live on? Because every two weeks you used to get a paycheck. And after all the deductions, there was a certain amount coming into your bank account every two weeks. We need to replace that. That's the first thing you figure. Is, okay, well, every two weeks I have to bring in about an average of this much money. It's so much per month. And it's so much every quarter. So, okay, we have a couple of months of money in the bank at all times. And uh, every month or so we throw another so many dollars into the bank to always have two months of exposure ex expenses in the bank and whatever's left over stays in the account and or goes towards uh, one-offs and and if you're carrying an old car loan that's got six grand left to go at zero percent interest from seven years ago well then just pay it out at zero percent interest or you really want to eliminate that 200 every two week payment, uh, 400 a month off of your overhead. Well, then just pay the damn balance off with one of your option credits and get rid of that. Well, that changes now the budget over here because your day to day living expenses just went down 400 a month. That's a good thing. Now you need less money every two months 
800 less every two months to get by on. That's good to know. What else have we got lying around? Oh, we got this stupid credit card that we've had. We at least to have a $20,000 balance on all our cards or a $40,000 balance on our card. And we just started knocking them off. And the first card we got rid of was the most expensive credit one, the one with the highest interest rate. We got rid of that one. Now we're moving in on number two, and then we're moving in on number three. And we're keeping our cards at a zero balance. Every time we use our credit cards, we gain points. We use the points for holidays, for flights, for hotels, for whatever. Or we have cashback cards, you know, where we're, we're spending and getting cash back and paying the damn thing off in full every it's a new world. It's the new world that you've come into because you figured out with this channel, oh my God, I can be the casino. I can be the person writing these contracts rather than the one buying the stupid contracts because the buyers almost always lose money. Of all the players out there in the option market, 90% of them are buyers only. They buy calls, sell calls, buy puts, sell, sell puts. They're, they're, they're longs. They, they go long. They're looking for lottery ticket payoffs. And then 10% of the market is where they write. They write contracts. And of the 10% that write, 90% uh, of those are institutions. The pros. The pros from Dover. And these are the ones that we, we hear the term, the pros, all the time. And yes, there are pros that buy contracts too and write contracts. But on the writing side, it's dominated by the professionals. Except for you guys. Um, for you and a few others out there, uh, on this channel, we specialize in talking about writing options. That's what we do here. And we're, we're totally, no other YouTube channel does this. Go ahead, go out there and find, find 20 other YouTubers. I dare you. Find 10 other YouTubers that only talk about writing options as a specialty. And your host is live every day during the market. Go ahead. I dare you. I double dare you. You're not going to find anyone else like me. Look at this face. Who else has a face like this? This is radio, baby, staring you in the face. By the way, hi to Tom Keen. He's on radio now from, from Bloomberg. Love Tom Keen. I miss him. I wish he were still on the air on TV. I think Bloomberg made a mistake. Anyway, that's another story entirely. Um, speaking of journalists, um, boy, did I, did I read a great article this weekend. Oh, man. And I've made a fatal mistake. I, I've made a terrible mistake. I have not, I didn't write down the name of the, um, of the individual. I didn't write down the name of the reporter. And I, I and, and, the, and the article is not showing right now on Bloomberg. I can find the article, but I got to do a search and I'm live. So I can't tell you the name of the reporter, but uh, there was a story this Saturday that came out about a, a Wall Street Journal a, a journalist. Um, and, uh, she was given $500 by her employers, by her editors, and she was told trade contracts, trade options for a week uh, in the hottest area of the option market right now, daily and weekly options. Get into the hot world of daily option trading and see if you can find a lottery ticket payoff. That was the instruction. Take 500 bucks. If you lose it, we'll eat the 500. If you make any money, it'll go to charity. So, Stay at home, watch the financial markets, do your research on your computer, da -da 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 -da, and find a lottery winning uh, option trade or two and see how you do with your 500 bucks. You're the, <coughs> you're the business <laughs> reporter. <coughs> you talk about uh, options trading. You talk about the stock market. You're, on a, you're a CNBC contributor from time to time. So here you go. Here's 500 bucks. So this individual was not actually the typical person coming into the market. This is not average, the average newbie coming into options trading, to be fair. This individual is in the business of covering finance. I don't know the background educational. It doesn't matter uh, because I looked at this story and I went, this is, this is wonderful. This is so great that they had this individual do this article. I am so pleased that, that this was done. She nailed it. She nailed the demographics of the market. She nailed the uh, attitude of the investors. And they're not investors. They're gamblers. Uh, without question, she nailed it absolutely perfectly. She, uh, she uh, talked about how people are looking for the hot one, the big one, the payoff pitch. 
And because there is no GameStop going on right now, there's no GameStop stock other than NVIDIA is the only one that's really moving a lot. There's very little else that you can play out there with that kind of action like it used to be with GameStop or AMC or other meme stocks. Those days are over. And so where, did the, where are those gamblers now? They're in the options market. They're buying calls and buying puts. And they are gambling anywhere from 500 each to 1,000 each to 5,000 each to 50,000 each and more. They're gambling with gobs of money. Five trillion a week is turning over in the options market in North America right now every week. Anyway, she went in there and she did 15 trades in one week. Lost on 10 of them. 10 losses, five gains or break evens. And it came down to her last day. Now, this is not fair to compare exactly what she did to exactly what's happening in the real world. Because in the real world, there is no one week time limit. You're not being given 500 bucks. You've got one week to trade and then let us know how you did. It, it doesn't work that way. People have forever to trade. Now, they blow their brains out in one day or in one week or a month. Fair enough. But there are others who find a way to keep playing and playing and playing and playing for month after month after month, year after year after year, looking for that one lottery ticket that will make it all work out. She was told, find a payoff. Find a big payoff and let us know about it. And on her last day, the Thursday of that week, I guess, she had uh, 375 bucks left out of her 500. And she gambled that Meta, which is Facebook, would on Thursday night, on that night, would come out with their financials above Wall Street's expectations. And so she bought a call option of Meta the day of, the Thursday of that night's release. And the stock came through. The company came through with a big number. Stock went up. And her contract gained from a dollar something to $20 a pop. And she sold on Friday morning when the market opened and she got a nice payoff and she ended up with a 2,000% return. And she took 100 bucks and turned it into $2,000. And so her account now is worth $2,400 and she shut it down. <laughs> That's not real life, okay? Real life is uh, a little different than that. Some folks may have had 10 of those calls instead of just one. Um, and others would have uh, reinvested that gain right away Friday morning into whatever for the rest of the day, who knows what, and who knows a week later what's left of that 24,000 because you got 10 out of 15 trades were losers. One was a winner. And can you do that every week? Uh, not necessarily. How many stocks do you know that went up 50 bucks, 60 bucks in a day in the last three weeks? Not many, handfuls. It's not a common thing. Even Adobe dropping $77 the other day down to uh, 4 four eighty something. Um, that was a one-off too. It right now, by the way, Adobe in the pre-market is up $4 at four ninety six. dollars Okay. This article was great. This article was reflective of many, many things that are really happening out there. And all weekend long, I was thinking of you guys going, oh man, am I ever glad that I do what I do on YouTube? Am I ever glad I do what I do here? That I've done these lessons, that you guys are taking these lessons. You hit me up for a one-on-one -on -one once in a while. You listen to me for an hour, hour and a half, where we converse back and forth. And many of you have a whole different outlook on everything now that you're part of this part of the stock market. You're 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 so the opposite of uh, of uh, the, the masses. And you're not the ones that lose 10 out of 15 trades. You're just not those people. If you're writing options the way you should be writing options, and you're doing rollovers the way you should be doing rollovers, you're ahead of the market like you should be ahead of the market and allowing the market to tell you what to do and you're staying on top. Generally speaking, you're not losing 10 out of 15 trades. There's no damn way that's happening here. And this gives you a whole long runway to enjoy a much higher quality of life because at the end of the day it comes down to <coughs> one thing can you <coughs> can you possibly is there a hope in hell that you can make more money from the options market every month consistently every month than it costs you to live 
Can you live off of this activity? Is it possible? Do you have enough capital and are doing the right kind of trades and being patient enough with your arm folding to allow your trades to mature out to nothing, in other words, to deteriorate enough so that you actually are making more than a month's salary. If you're doing it really well, you're making your entire month's salary in the first week of every month. You're not making your month's salary. You're making four times as much as you need every month to get by. So that the first quarter you make is your own nut to get by on. The next quarter is just safety cash. And the next half it stays in your account and rolls up. And you've got tax money as well. You're fine. That is the ultimate to be. That's the ultimate way to be an option writer and to be full time. And now you can be wherever you want to be anytime you want to be anywhere you want to be. You want to be in England for a month on a, or two months in an Airbnb a condo. You want to rent a, an apartment for two full months in London and just see southern UK for two months. You can do that. You have your account with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter. You can trade options at a moment's notice. The market's open in the afternoon. <laughs> Hardly inconvenient. You want to go to Europe for three months, four months, six months, a year? You want to come back home for a quick week visit, take care of some crap, and then go back and spend you know months at a time at various countries doing various things? Knock yourself out. If you want to go to, to, the, to, to Asia, you, you want to go to Africa, South America, you want to travel to Australia, New Zealand, you want, you want to see Japan. I mean, really, really see Japan for like three months. The world is open to you. Uh, this is a world you've never had given to you. The, the last time some of you, some of you had an opportunity to take three months to do any kind of a trip was right after high school or after college and it was generally after college because after college you were 25 26 27 you were kind of grown up now and uh, you're legal to drink and uh your parents grandparents uncles cousins put a couple of bucks together in a pot to give you the summer of the summer of george to go traveling for three months and you backpacked it with a friend you know you went with your best buddy your best girlfriend whatever and you went traveling the trains of europe for three months or whatever the hell you did that was the last time that was the last time and you stayed in hostels or you had relatives over there thank god you you, you know you, you met up with other friends somewhere i mean yeah yeah it was a trip of a lifetime it was the trip of your life and you haven't been like that ever since. Because when you got back, you had to start making money now. And you did. You found you found whatever you found, however you found it. You got into whatever you got into. And kids and, and, and life and marriage and, and divorce and whatever the hell happened to you. And welcome to, to today, where we are now. And here's this guy. A guy with a face for radio. That's all he's got is a face for radio who is daring to tell you. He's daring you to dare to dream about the idea that, you know, you can do it again permanently. You could do this for a long time. Uh, you can do this on a regular basis. You, you could change your life not at all, a little bit, 30% different. 50%, whatever you want. And you can start with one toe in the water and then two and three. And maybe six months from now, you're making more money, trading a little more. And then a year from now, you're comfortable and you're, but you're not changing anything. You're, you're, you're I'm, not, I'm not getting rid of that job. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't believe this guy that much, even after a year, even after a year. No, 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 no. But there will come a point in time where you will sit down. You really will and analyze yourself because that's the hardest thing sometimes for us to do is to analyze ourselves and or it's your your dearest person in your world that will say to you wake up and smell the freaking coffee and they'll give you the will smith dope slap to wake you up and you'll realize oh my god the amount of money i'm making doing this why are we killing ourselves still why are we still doing all this other crap when we have this gig over here that has been delivering and can deliver so much more, we're not even giving it the full throttle 
to really deliver for us because we're too busy with all kinds of other crap. I get it. It's it's not your fault. It's the way it is. But sometimes the dope slap comes from this guy or from someone you know, from an outside source you never thought would wake you the hell up. Sometimes a friend of yours will talk to you for the first time. You'll talk to the first time in two or three years, five years. You haven't talked to a pal of yours in five years. Somehow you bump into this person. I don't know. And all of a sudden, that individual talks to you, and you tell them what you've been doing and what you're doing with us here. And that individual wakes you up and says, well, why aren't you doing this full time? Well, good Lord, you're making all kinds of money doing this. Well, hell, you, why are you still working? Why are you an idiot? And you hear it from a source you trust that has no agenda, has no agenda over you. And this now makes you reflect and go, well, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. There will come a time. When it happens, it happens, and God bless any of you for it. I love you for it. First, second, and third base cover. I'm excited for you guys. Uh, again, congratulations to all of you out there, and you know who you are. You people know who you are, exactly know who you are. You're the ones who, are been, who have been in the last three months. You've been buying my classes on my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. You, you've got your butts over there. You, you, I don't know. I finally talked you into it. I don't know what happened. Maybe your spouse finally said, for crying out loud, you're watching this guy every goddamn day. You're driving me nuts telling me what he's telling you to do, and you haven't taken a goddamn class yet? You're not for real. You're pretending. You're just, you're just going through the motions. Stop with this nonsense. You've done this all your life. Get off your duff. Take control of your existence and take his classes. Why don't you start with the first one? The second one, the third one. Give it a shot because you'll never know unless you take some of these. There's no tests. There's no exams. There's no pop quizzes. You don't have to stand in front of the class and talk to anybody. It's you and me. And you'll watch me talk to people who are live watching me. Auntie Jen is the moderator of these classes. They're very light. They're very delightful. They should be easy to understand. Many people say to me from time to time, oh, they, they were pretty easy at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I started ground zero, okay? Then we add every layer on top of every layer. It's like an onion from the like reverse engineering, peeling another layer on top of the next layer. This is what we're doing here. There's 17 classes now, okay? I know some of you take one a week. Some of you are doing two a week. Some of you are doing like five at a time. It's unbelievable how, how you're doing it. More power to you. Um, whatever's the way it works for you, God bless you. Um, but you're taking the bull by the horns and saying, enough's enough. I'm watching, I'm watching all these people here talk to this guy all the time and to each other. And they have their Discord channel. All the Gold Bagel members have their Discord thing and they're all doing that. And I want to be part of that group, but boy, it would help if I knew what I was saying. And there are a number of people who watch me now who, go on, who are going, I don't feel very confident in talking because I, I don't want to come off like a moron. I get it. I, I understand. It's okay. I totally understand. How, how else are you going to start in the option writing business unless you start in the option writing business? So you might as well start now. Hang out here, free. Watch me all you want. Listen to me all you want. Start with class number one and then start with class number two. I'll tell you, by the time you get to the fourth, fifth class, you're writing contracts. You're likely to be writing contracts. At the very least, the first contracts you'll write will be in a practice account. That's the easiest way to start this whole thing is, is take some classes, hang out here and open up a brokerage account. You're going to have to have one anyway and open up a brokerage account with options trading and you'll have a practice account most likely. Check out these sites, Tasty Trade, Fidelity, whatever they're called and start trading. Start trading on these, uh, on these practice accounts and let's see what's going on. Risk-free. But don't open up a practice account with like $250,000 if you've only got $25,000. Don't play that stupid game. That is the dumbest way to do this. If you've got 25 grand in real money, uh, then open up a practice account with 25 grand in, in pretend, pretend money and manage that for a while so that you can really see some reasonable real life trades that you would be doing in real life. Otherwise, you're just, you're playing a game. And I don't want you playing games. I want you playing real life and winning at real life. Okay.
congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much for the thumbs ups on this show. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. And thank you for becoming members of this channel. If you're becoming a Gold Eagle member, God bless you. You're keeping us on the air. We just passed last week the highest number of Gold Bagel members we've ever had. We announced the Gold Bagel level membership level. I believe it was at the end of 2022. I think it was then. So it's been all of 2023, now into 2024. I think it's been that long. Now, I could be wrong. It might have been the end of 2021. And it was all 2022, all 2023. Whatever the time frame was, we have never had as many Gold Bagel members as we have now. And I thank you for making that move. It's it's humbling, very humbling. Thank you all for being here. Um, what else am I going to tell you? We're up 58 on the on the uh, unit, uh, the Dow. Let me just refresh my page to make sure I'm not, I'm not inaccurate. We've got 27 minutes to go before we open up. Uh, so we'll see what's going on with the opening of the day here. We've got now the Dow up 71. We have the S&P showing a 37-point gain, and we have the NASDAQ showing 211 points. And that is 1.1% for the NASDAQ, almost 1.2. S&P up 0.72, and the Dow is up 0.18 of a percentage. So the Dow is way behind uh, the, the uh, NASDAQ, okay? Uh, the Dow needs to go up by about a factor of six. So it should be up right now 420 points to equal the NASDAQ market just to give you an idea. So we're up 70 points instead of 420 points. There is where we're at right this second, okay? Oil is up 23 cents a barrel, 8131 uh, ballpark is where we're at, all right? Uh, Richard Carlin has been a member of this channel for 36 months. Uh, Richard, thank you so much uh, for this um, and for everything. I uh, really appreciate this, man. This is awesome stuff. I uh, love it that I see uh, these kinds of uh, these kinds of uh, comments that come out, where folks let me know how long they've been a member, and it's stunning to see how long some folks have been here. Uh, 120 thumbs ups have come in so far. Thank you all for the 120 thumbs ups. There are 329 watching, which means, of course, 209 are slackers. So 209 of you are not even getting off your butts to hand me a thumbs up yet. Unforgivable sin, but you know. You are what you are, and it's okay. You can make it up, though. You can make up for it. Hit the thumbs up button right now. Tell YouTube by doing that that this channel is an engagement channel, and you enjoy it, and you find it entertaining, you find it useful, and more people should be sent here by YouTube. So help me with that. Um, let's cover a couple of stocks that we like to watch, and let's talk about a few of the things here. Um, this morning, it has been mainly positive all morning. I've got Rocket Lab right now at about uh, up about six cents at four, just under four eighteen a share. Um, SoFi uh, seven ten up about six cents. Uh, GameStop at fourteen thirty three up eight. Um, GameStop comes up with their financials uh, not too long from now. I'm just double checking here on my uh, system. GameStop releases on March 26th, so that's in eight days. So next week, um, Tuesday, we get the GameStop numbers. So we'll watch for that. Uh, Matterport is up a nickel. It's at 182. We're up uh, uh, half a penny on 23 Me, Nothing went on there, 45 cents. Spire is up 54 cents at 12.49. I'm not sure if Spire has um, announced the closing of their um, of their of their proposed share I'm going to call it redistribution uh, thing it's not a it's not an underwriting because they're not bringing any cash in they're just redistributing a shareholder stock uh, into other shareholders hands and I don't see anything about it here at the moment so I'm not sure what the deal is there we're at 12.49 up 54. And the stock um, a couple of months ago, um, uh, like three months ago, was sitting in the 666, uh, 660, 670 range. Um, and it's gone from 665 to 1249 uh, with a, uh, with a, uh, a private placement uh, done in the middle of all this that I believe brought in, um, what was it, uh, 10 million bucks or something like that into the coffers of the company something like that so it was it was all right um anyway this morning it's up a little bit 
moving on from Spire, uh, nothing on ATIP at the moment that I can see. Smart rent, no change yet. Apple, let's talk about the big boys. Apple's up two bucks, and um, Google has to be mentioned now in the same sentence. Uh, Google is up 727 a share to 149.44. Google was down two bucks on Friday. It's up 730 right now. Apple was down 38 cents Friday. It's up 207 right now. There is a story out um about these two guys that they are uh, apparently actively working together to install ai software capability of some kind into apple phones so something big is going on between google and apple where the two could be doing this with regard to ai something that's all I can tell you because I am not, as you are well aware, at all aware of how it works in the uh, high-tech sphere. I, I'm not a technician guy, but some of my viewers might be. We'll hear a lot about it if it goes ahead, if more news comes out or if more leaks come out or rumors come out. I'll let you know. But the market loves this. The market this morning, pre-market is hearing this kind of talk. They like it. They like it a lot because in the case of Apple, we're a little oversold right now, and Google has been kind of schlepping around a bit. So this is a nice little bump. Goldman Sachs down a buck forty on Friday. We're up two fourteen this morning. Cisco was down eighty six on Friday. We're up twenty one right now at forty nine fifteen. Tesla getting interesting here. We're one sixty three fifty seven on the close Friday night, gaining a buck seven Friday. Right now. 659 gain. The story this morning is that the price of a Model Y has gone up a thousand bucks a car or something like that. There's rumors of price hikes and uh, there might be other developments happening, but the stock is getting a bit of a, a bit of a bump at this point. So that, that's 650 at 170.20 now for Tesla. Um, Arc Innovations, the, uh, the uh, Kathy Woods, uh, uh, ETF it's now at 49.15 up 49 cents it lost eight cents on Friday Microsoft had a really good run last week hitting new highs uh, all-time highs of I believe 427.82 it closed Friday night at 416.42 losing 880 giving back a, a chunk of that big gain but it's uh, it's down another 340 this morning at 413.37 so we're about $14.50 below the all-time high. Um, and we're right now at 413 on uh, on Microsoft. All right. Uh, Pfizer is up four cents, was down 19 on Friday. <clears throat> HPQ was down 19 on Friday as well. It's now up 13 cents at 3056. Uh, Google, like I said before, was down two bucks on Friday, but it's up 730 now at 139.53. Amazon was down 433 on Friday. It's up 145 this morning at 175.87. NVIDIA lost a dollar on Friday, dollar eight, to close at 878.36. It's up 2408 now at 902.45. And they have a show and tell today. They have their presentation, the market presentation today. And I doubt there will be bad news coming out of there. Uh, it'll be more of this is what we're working on. This is what we're developing. Here's the latest products we're on. This is the future. I hope that's what they're going to talk about. We'll find out. The market is already anticipating something good to come out of this, and we're at 902. Okay. Unity Software was up nine cents on Friday. It's up 23 now at 2632. Uh, C3.ai Inc. or AI was down 18 on Friday, 18 pennies, now up 23 at 2916. <coughs> Adobe <coughs> lost Friday 77.99 to close at 4.92.46. This morning it's up 2.19 a share, 4.94.65. This stock is so over, 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 oversold. Did I mention it's oversold? Uh, this thing is uh, slingshotting the other direction at any time. In my personal opinion which all of this is it's just my old the old man's opinion the low of the year 331.89 the high of the year 638 we're at 494 so we're 142 dollars below the high of the year 
<clears throat> which is 25% off, and I think we're oversold. So that's me. That's my personal opinion. Nothing will change because of that. You have to decide for yourself. But that stock, I think, is perfectly positioned where you could be a credit spread put, credit spread writer. You could write puts on this, I think, in the 420, 440 neighborhood, 430, 450 neighborhood. Um, in the month or two out, I think you could do quite nicely. That's my opinion. Um, and Netflix is up 522. It was down 713 on Friday. It's interesting coming back now to 610, 611. The spiders were down 350 on Friday. We're up 388 this morning. The queues were, uh, uh, I don't, I don't what, it, I don't know what they did on Friday, but we were at 433 Friday. We're now up 541. Over on IBM, we're up 31 cents this morning, but we lost 236 on Friday. Right now we're at 191.39. Meta Platforms, like I said, was down 770, but it's now up 620 today. I, I may not have mentioned Meta earlier, but um, Facebook was at 484 Friday, 490 right now, 490.55. Snapback rally kicking in here. Okay, Vanek, um, down 162 on Friday. That's SMH, the ETF. It's now up 425. Semiconductors, it's coming on. Home Depot, down 204 Friday, up 78 cents right now, 374.02. Enphase Energy, down 268 on Friday. We're up 96 right now, 108.70. Palantir Technologies, down 94 cents Friday at 2349. We're now up 30 cents, 2379. Uber was down 158 on Friday. It was up 93 cents this morning. Coinbase was up 869 on Friday. It's now down a buck six, it's sitting at 241.30. That is the story of these stocks at the moment, and we'll see what's uh, what's going on. There is the uh, there is the the, the 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 dealio. Welcome to the party, pal. Great to have you with us today. And I appreciate you all uh, joining me uh, from wherever you are around the world. Say hi and let me know where you're watching me from. Uh, what's your temperature going to be today? Are you in winter or what? Adobe 494 holding a little gain at the moment. Not too much really going on over there. Thank you again for, uh, for uh, joining us, becoming members of this channel, uh, subscribers. Uh, glad you're here. The fun fun is at 134 thumbs up. -ish. There you go. Honeybee, the classes pay for themselves after the information is put into practice. Sometimes I've got the best way to handle a trade until I remember a helpful snippet from one of those lessons. Um, what's going on? What do you think the intrinsic value is of SoFi? Gustav wants to know. Um, I don't have an answer for that other, to, other than to say, just to say, uh, based on what the company has stated for their next two years' estimations, uh, based on uh, most analysts' expectations of earnings, revenues, and the fact that the company's membership numbers are exploding, um, they'll probably hit 10 million members during 2024. I'm pretty sure they're going to do that. Uh, I think the stock is woefully undervalued, but that is my personal opinion. I would be very comfortable at 12 to 15 right now. I would not be uncomfortable thinking, oh, gosh, it's way overvalued. But the market is the market, and it's 712 this second in the pre-market. Honeybee, maybe I should go back to college so I can apply to be a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Now nah, I'm learning more here. You know, I don't have a problem with any reporter doing what this reporter did, not in the slightest. I encourage it. I would really rather have someone try to trade this stuff and then write an article about it. That is hands-on. I tried it myself. I did this. And this is an individual that has exposure to Wall Street, has contacts all over Wall Street. I'm uh, envious of the contacts that this individual has. Uh, I love the article. I, I gave it I gave it top marks, uh, absolutely top marks. Okay, if SoFi goes to six, I'll be buying more. If it goes to 10, I still won't be selling, uh, not until 2026. Uh, JR, if, uh, JR says, yeah, if you're experiencing, expecting any stock to follow the predicted direction from any commentator, analyst, no matter how much experience or predicted wins, you will be disappointed a majority of the time. Uh, no sell SoFi to six. Uh, JR, uh, it's just an opinion. Uh, Lorraine, good morning. Number 155 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you. Uh, JR, same, some here are missing key phrases like that's my opinion. And I think 
Please be realistic about how stock market option writing investing trading works. I'm with you there. Thank you, JR. Splair, a good morning from me as well. Just finished a cake while I'm lurking. You're in Dortmund. It's cake time over there. Uh, okay, let me correct. It was a Danish butter pie. Oh, man, you're driving me nuts. JR, I've been a member for 19 months, Uncle Bruce. Um, 19 whole months as a member, but a lurker before that. Thank you, Uncle B. Thank you, my friend. I love that photo of us together there. Honeybee, a splare, but um, a donatus, um, the DM. I calculate the intrinsic value of their guidance for 2026 with inputs of 55 earnings per share, 20% growth from there. It's a $24 stock. There you go. I, 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 I'm not taking that one away. I'll, I'm happy to hear that. I was looking at that uh, those those guidance numbers. I, I think I think if I recall, they. It's between 60 and 80 cents profit by 26 ish. Um, you're using 50. I don't, I don't have a problem with or 55. It's fine. Yeah, I, I'm thinking 40 times PE multiple minimum is where I'm thinking this will trade at. It'll be a 40 times PE. But I wouldn't be surprised. We'll trade at 40 projected e, EPS, like projected, uh, you know forward-looking uh, PE multiples and that type of thing, because we have to. The company just turned a profit last quarter. We don't have a year of earnings yet. We have a quarter of, of a profit. If you go back four quarters and you take out in the third quarter that write-off, that goodwill write-off, you take that out of the picture, because that's not a financial profit or loss. It's not like a loan went bad or anything like that. You'll notice the losses per share dropped, 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 and then there was a profit per share. And now the expected profits per share per quarter are expected to rise. And with this um, this cap call transaction deal they did just in the last two weeks, that right there will add um, four to six cents a share earnings to the company on top of the capital they have. I, and I think that could add another dime to the bottom line profit. It wouldn't surprise me that that $750 billion deal that turned into 845, something like the 845 million, that might add uh, 15 to 20 cents profit to the company over what they projected just three months ago. That's what I'm wondering about. Are they going to come up with a revision of their projected earnings between now and first week of May when they reveal first quarter financials, which expire 13 days from now is the end of the quarter. Five weeks after that, they reveal their financials. Are they going to tell us between now and then that, oh, yeah, we've got to revise our financials. So uh, we, we, uh, we mentioned three months ago that we thought we would make this much per share. Well, now with this deal that we've done here, this cash injection, we actually think we'll make this much per share because, of course, the interest is off the table. We don't pay interest anymore, which is $40 million a year now. It was going to be $60 million starting in May or June. That's off the table. So, of course, that's an immediate gain in profits to the company. Did they project that they would make 50 to 60 to 80 cents a share by 2026? thinking they would owe $60 million a year in interest. Was that number in the number? Because if that isn't, that's not there anymore. That's $0.06 cents a share uh, per year. That That's 240 times 40 multiple. P multiple of 40 with a $0.06 cent improvement. In, that's 240 a share higher projection values for the company. That's just one thing. What, what about the money, the, the leftover cash added to the... Uh, corporate balance sheet, that, that, if that adds a dime more, then we have another $4 pop on a 40 time multiple. So now we have $6.40 higher estimated value of the stock between now and 26, 2026. That's only a year and three quarters from now. This is the first quarter of 2024. Think about that. The stock's going to go to $25, $30 a share anyway by 2026. And we're at seven ten today. And we're dealing with maybe 20 months of time, 12 months plus eight months. Are we talking about 20 months that the stock could be at $30? So we take seven from 30, leaves 23 divided by 20 months. What do you got? Buck 15 a month. The growth of the stock could theoretically be $1.15 a month higher on average, on a straight line guess. That's, that's how accountants would do it. Real life is different, but think about that. One fifteen a month, every month growth in the value of the company or the trading value of the stock, possibly. 
Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, fun times, fun, fun times. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, let's see, uh, Stephen Butler. Uh, hello, everybody from uh, Northwest Arkansas. Uh, we've been having pleasant spring days. Go so far, I go. Tim Kaufman, hello from Connecticut. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, Brad, uh, number 167. Good morning, Uncle Bruce. I don't mean to switch gears, but do you think ME will split the save the delisting? Time is running out. I still plan to hold whatever I got, but it's not looking good anytime soon. They're going to have to do a, a, a rollback. They have to. Uh, they're, they're, they're not getting the stock over a dollar right now. I mean, it's obvious. So what is it going to be? Is it going to be a 10 to 1, 8 to 1, 20 to 1? I don't know. Uh, they got to do something. They will do something. They don't want to. They don't want to do a rollback, but uh, I don't know what else uh, can happen unless there's something I'm not aware of. They, they, they don't call me. Uh, I don't get these insider phone calls. Uh, no one calls me from the inside of these companies. One, uh, it will take time for people to get used to SoFi as a name brand and trust opening an account and having their savings account and direct deposit. The key is to keep growing the customer base. Uh, <clears throat> Luca. Hello from sunny Dubai. Welcome from Dubai. That is a city I want to see. Uh, Jen doesn't want to go, but I would like to go. I'd like to see Dubai. Um, thank you for joining me. It's uh, tr fantastic you're here. Say hi to everybody in Dubai for me. Um, um, macro something. Um, hi, Uncle Bruce. Any thoughts on averaging down a poor man covered call? I have an AI. $20 call for 2026. It comes down a bit from where I got it, or it's come down a bit at 1744 in the 9010th time. Average down, reposition, or just hang tight. Um, I just hang tight and keep writing. Just 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 keep writing. And if you're if you're building cash and you can buy more of them to write more contracts, that's a way to average down and write more at the same time. Keep it going. Uh let's let's go. Uh thanks for all that you do. Uh, thank you, big M. Appreciate you. Parker Ivy, um, ever since Amazon Prime Video added ads, I've been getting lots of SoFi ads play before the shows. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they are. Well, they are doing a promotion. There's no question SoFi is heavily promoting. Now that they're the official banker of the NBA, there's that relationship which will pay dividends uh, memberships. Many, many, many new clients. I'm certain about that. Savage Wall Street. Good morning, my fellow simpletons and degenerates. I hope everyone is ready for a freak out, break out, and sell some cover calls this week. Welcome, sir. A splayer, Uncle Bruce, I have, I have learned if you are in a hidden YouTube corner, then it's necessary to ask the companies. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, welcome all. You know, this, this whole thing about predictions of what the stocks are going to do and uh, red bar indicators and uh, supply like death cross talk and resistance levels and 20 day, uh, five, uh, 200 dollar day, 200 day moving averages, 50 day moving averages and momentum trading and, and the short interest. And eh, eh, eh. if everyone thinks the same thing, that the shares are going to go down, guess what they do? They go up. <laughs> there's no one, there's no one, uh, uh, selling it i mean they're just gonna, they're just gonna well i might as well just do it, try to buy more if it goes down it always does the opposite the markets don't listen to themselves they actually don't even listen to the people who are in the market the stocks just do what most people want the stock to do today or this second if there's more buyers it goes up if there's more sellers right now than buyers it goes down second by second and that's the story that's the thinking of it um what can i say aluka we'll go for a drink in dubai when we we become rich from sofi we will go for a drink in dubai well, I'll tell you, um, I would love to come to Dubai. I really, really would. If I could do a meet and greet in Dubai, that would be pretty cool. Uh, that would be really cool to have a meet and greet in Dubai. Um, if uh, if there were a, if there were some kind of a financial convention get together, and I could get an invite to that, and that would include an airfare ticket there and back uh, with some hotel time. I'd be seriously looking at that. Um, definitely be interested in something like that because uh, there's there, there'd be dollars in them their deserts. But uh, some pretty cool people in Dubai, no question. From the globe, absolutely. A BP. Uh, so with SoFi shorters winning the ride, each option expiry date. Do you really think they will allow this to get above twelve by the end of this year? They can't stop it if it goes up this level. You have to understand something. The shorters have power. Yeah, yeah, they do. But they can't override the market when the market wants in. When this market wants in with 100 to 200 million shares of trading per day, 
the shorters won't be able to stop it. They only have 170 million shorted. They can't stop this stock. Uh, there's no way they can get out in one day. It would take them two weeks to get out. By the time they got out, it'd be 2025 a share. So don't think the shorters rule the roost. They're having a little fun right now, but they don't rule the roost. Uh, not at all. All right. Uh, Alberto. Okay, I'm here. Let's go. Larry, four minutes to setting us free. BP playing devil's advocate again. Sorry, Uncle Bruce. Uh, I'm ready, says Larry. I'm ready, baby. I, 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 I'm ready. There we go. Uh, Bobby Joe, what does the Spire deal mean? Um, they sold 833,000 shares to a company at 12. A month later, the company sells to public at 12. Why would the company shoulder the risk? Um, I think what we're doing here is a two-step. I think it's a two-step deal, and I love this deal. I love it. The public company has got the money. They got the 10 million bucks in the bank. They're just moving on. They had no interest in trying to convince the market to buy stock from them at $12 a share when it was trading at $6.50 a share. I mean, not going to happen. So make a splash. Do this deal with this partner, Ocean Signal, Signal Ocean, whatever they're called. Put the money in the bank right there. Stock was the $14 a share. Signal Ocean now re releases the stock. And this can take a month. It doesn't have to be done in 15 minutes. This 833000 might take a month to get done. I don't even know if it's finished yet. I have no idea. I have no announcement on it unless anyone knows of, a, of an announcement. I love this deal. I just love this. The backdoor way of raising 10 million bucks without uh, any work whatsoever by the public company. Sweet ride. Anyway, but Bruce, what happened to your SoFi jacket? It's in Calgary. It's safe in sound Calgary. Um, JR, uh, hey, cuz is here. Uh, we can begin. Let's go. Uh, Borough King Sound, good morning, everybody. Uncle Bruce, I am number 189 on your thumbs up meter. Thank you, everybody out there, for hitting these thumbs ups for us. Uh, we appreciate it. We're approaching 200 thumbs ups just before the opening. It's absolutely wonderful. We used to go crazy happy if we hit 100 before we opened. Now we're almost at 200 before we open. You guys are awesome. 435 people here, 190 thumbs ups. There's only 200 slackers, 245 slackers. Don't let our friend, Mr. Strickland, catch you red-handed without giving me a thumbs up. Please hit that thumbs up button. Help us out. We would appreciate that very, very much. Okay, we're going to go a content only, a content um uh, I should say comment only. <laughs> I'll get it out. Commentary only from members of the channel. Oh, my gosh, that was hard to say. Every day we uh, have the first hour is wide open. You can say hi to me uh, from wherever you are. But if you become a member, and if you are a member, you are able to talk to me now as we start opening the markets. And uh, that's a benefit to the members of this channel. Thank you, all of you who have become Members of this channel in the last uh, three plus years, um, it is incredibly humbling to uh, to know that a number of you have decided to join this channel, one level or the other. It's uh, fabulous. I love you for it. And uh, Jen and I talk about this all the time. This is a huge indicator of acceptance, and we really appreciate it. 217 thumbs ups. Here they come. Strickland ain't catching some of you guys. All right. Thank you all. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you would please. Uh, we're watching Adobe at 495.50. We're up 308 on Adobe. The question is, will Adobe uh, have a little run over 500 today? It could well do so. Um, again, once again, I am warning you, this guy has pink slips, and he's roaming the hall looking for anyone who has not given us a thumbs up. So hit that thumbs up button, and welcome to the party, pal. Uh, we're having fun here at the Nakatomi Tower. Let's get going. Even this doofus knows. Give this guy a thumbs up because otherwise it, it could turn into manure. You don't want that to happen. I hate manure. Oh, my God. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Let's get going. Larry, hit the thumbs up, baby. Let's start trading this puppy and see if you can make some money today. Write some options out there. Let's see what happens. The casino is open. You're letting them in. Your slot machines are all set up. You're, you're ready to write. Let's hope for nothing but cash, cash, cash. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. From wherever you are it's uh, much appreciated say hi to me tell me where you're watching me from if you dare what's your temperature going to be today uh, are you getting some spring in the air is there any hope or is it still winter where you are let me know uh thank you all so very much we're in the um high 70s now we're going to hit 85 by the end of the week 
it's normal around here. It's starting to get normal. That's beautiful stuff. Uh, we're up 78 on the Dow last I saw. I think we're up 145 now on the Dow Jones. Looking pretty good. There we go. 703 on the old SoFi right at the moment. If I read this correctly, 696 I'm seeing, 694 I'm seeing. So I'm not reading it correctly. 694 on SoFi. The Dow's up 131, by the way. We're up 131 on the Dow. We're up 48 on S&P. We're up 209 on NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the winner. We're up 1.37%. The Dow's only up a third of a percent. So the, the Dow is not even a quarter as good. It should be almost five times better than this. 650 points to match NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is on a tear. You can thank NVIDIA for this. 910 a share right now, up $36. 914 up 36 dollars pardon me adobe is up six bucks not surprised to see this i'm expecting adobe back to 520 530 in the next week or two i'm expecting it it's my opinion way oversold ridiculous there's credit spread opportunities here on adobe if you play your cards right there are definitely credit spread opportunities on nvidia available if you're gold bagel you already know this um uber is up 61 cents SoFi 694 right now down nine. GameStop 1410 down 14 cents. We'll see if this first few minutes comes and goes and then we pop up here as well. Right now, the volume, opening volume on SoFi, 3.1 million shares. Quiet, not very heavy. GameStop volume, 174,000. Quiet, nothing much there. Rocket Lab down two cents. We have AI uh, up a uh, nickel. We've got the spiders up 476. Qs are up $6. We've got the Spire up 11 cents. We have Apple up 329, uh, continuing this momentum move because of this Google rumor that uh, Apple and Google are working together on AI insertion into Apple phones, courtesy of Google. So there's something happening here. This, is, this would be a huge, huge, did I say huge? Deal. Big deal. It would be a big deal. Uh, Enphase down 29 cents. AMD up 115. Netflix up eight bucks. Tesla up 430. Matterport up three and a half cents. Smart rent down two. Um, ATIP no change. Unity down two. Google, like I said, uh, Google up 909. Alphabet 909, 151. They like the news here. They're, people love to hear this. Moderna is up 41 cents. Cisco's up 23. Pfizer unchanged. IBM up 27. HBQ down 11. Microsoft down 27 cents. Um, Amazon is up 78 cents. Home Depot up $4.14. Vanic Semiconductors, SMH ETF is up 424 at 222. And you can write options on this. You can do cash secured puts on this. You can play credit spreads on this. Up to you. Where the high for 52 weeks, 239. We're at 222. Looking at um, credit spreads on puts, not a bad idea. Goldman Sachs up a dollar 31. Boeing is down 292. The news just is bad. We're at 179 on, on this thing. Nowhere near 200 anymore. Uh, call credit spreads uh, 240s, 250s, 230s, 250s, somewhere in that range. Knock yourself up. Meta. Uh, Facebook up 480. Target is up down 14, by the way. Target. Uh, JB Morgan is up 30. Costco's up 232. Walmart down a dime. Disney up 156. American Airlines is up six cents. AMC down a penny. DraftKings up 59 cents. And Royal Caribbean up 38 centinos at the moment. That is the early, 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 early peak five minutes into the market. 142 gain on our Dow Jones. 52 on the S&P approximately. Let me refresh my page and just triple check. 695 now on SoFi, low of the day, 692. Uh, we're down 7 cents only on GameStop at the moment. Okay, the Dow is up 126, S&P up 52, and the NASDAQ up 245 points. NASDAQ is up 1.5%. Beautiful start, really good. The Dow is one-fifth as good. It should be up 675 points. It's only up 114, so the Dow is lagging behind NASDAQ. Uh, S&P up one full percent. Oil up 74 cents a barrel. 81.77 is the talk on oil. That's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Welcome to the program. Um, we're at the low of the day on your SoFi, 692 right now. That is the low trade at the moment. SoFi volume, uh, 4 million. Very quiet. We'll let the first 10, 20 minutes go and see if the selling is a little wave. And then do we go the other direction? Because 
we had this happen on Monday. We had a little pop and then on Friday, I should say. And then we went under seven and then we came back up again. And this, this morning under seven at the moment, is this really going to six or is this actually going to pop to eight this week? Is this the first week of sy systematic upward movement in SoFi because we are 13 days away from the end of the quarter? Everything going to, everything's got to be revised. The numbers will be higher as far as how much they're going to clear because of the financing they did. Hasn't been revealed yet what the new numbers are expected to be for the second, third, fourth quarter of this year. Is it possible that the shares bottom out today somewhere here and then from here they march to the 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 level in the next three weeks? Coming into the release of the second quarter financials, which means that in the first week of May, they release a second consecutive quarter of financial profits. Do you know what this means? Have you any idea how important this is? It means we are six months away from the third and the fourth quarter of financial results, or second and third quarter. In other words, a full year, four consecutive quarters of earnings will be booked and revealed to the market. If this continues, it's going to be profit, 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 profit. And that means that SoFi, as of uh, the first week of May, could be six months away from being eligible to be included into the S&P 500 index. That's, this is a game changer, okay? The first thing is to make profits. The next thing is to make more profits per quarter. They're gonna do that. They're growing, they're expanding. The next step is after four quarters of uh, profits in a row, now the meter starts. The meter's on. When does this get included in the S&P 500? Because they'll have a fifth quarter, a sixth quarter, a seventh quarter of added profits, added profits, added profits. So now if, if the stock is trading in the $20 neighborhood in the six months from now, because of four consecutive earning quarters and four more quarters of much higher projected earnings, we'll have a forward PE multiple of maybe 40 or more we may well be in the 20 to 30 dollar neighborhood putting this company in the 20 to 30 billion dollar market cap area which definitely qualifies it for inclusion into the s p 500 it'll be larger than probably the 50th smallest companies on the s p at that point already now will it take another month after that or another quarter will it take two quarters before the s p committee decides to add it i don't know I do not know, but I do know this. If the shares go to 40 or $50, by the time it does become an S&P 500, then it's a 40 to 50 billion market cap corporation and growing dramatically. Uh, you will not remember the $7, 690 stock price anymore. You long, you'll long go, oh, those are the good old days, just seven months ago. Oh, God, you remember it was that cheap? Why didn't I buy it? Why didn't I write cash secured puts like Bruce told us to? Why don't I listen to that guy? Um, what can I say, Honeybee? I'm I'm really just uh, I'm really just Jr. I, I was looking into opening a SoFi account. I see it's only buying calls and puts so far, though. Alberto, boom! Thanks, Larry. Deploying covered strangles on Tesla. Um, Jr. Honeybee, there are a lot of cool features on their app, like being able to book travel through Expedia with a 15% discount. I like this, uh, Honeybee. Yikes! GameStop went. Zzz, uh, we're sitting at 1402. Uh, White Feather. Oh, I'm thanking NVIDIA. My put spreads are looking very nice right now. Honeybee, I'm really just here. That sounds nice. Alberto, I've been using SoFi app for three years. I love this thing. Hector, Honeybee, um, JR, it's surreal. A DJ, um, up, spiders up, cues are up. SoFi, tank. Uh, JR, uh, but that means bargoon time. Mandu number five, 232 thumbs up, Bruce. They're coming in. Uh, Hector, breakfast at the sale shaped hotel. Great views, says Hector. Oh, wonderful. That, yeah, that'd be kind of cool, there, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Have a meet and greet at the at the hotel in Dubai that looks like a giant sail. And uh, take a look around. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, yeah, where else should we have breakfast in Dubai? Anybody? Um, BP, uh, Uncle Bruce, with regards to SoFi shorters, um, will they just not short with illegal derivatives like they did with GameStop and AMC off the market, under the counter, et cetera. There is the black market. Uh, there is that too. There's the black market on every stock. 
there are derivatives everywhere, including SoFi has a call option on its own stock. That's a black market trade. That is an off market transaction derivative. Um, we're talking hundreds of millions of shares that are probably involved in derivatives trading on SoFi, not just the company, but institutions everywhere. Once this stock starts to run, the leverage that is enjoyed by the winners of these leveraged uptrades will blow the shorters out of the water because you have to understand one little thing. There's always one thing you need to understand, okay? It's just, just one thing. The shorters are short, we believe, about 170 million shares, okay? The stock is $6.90. How low can the stock go? To zero. It can go to zero. The shorters could go all the way to zero on this stock. They Theoretically, that's the theoretical thing. Now, how much can they lose? Infinity, because the stock can go to infinity. So, you know, the shorters have this, uh, this, 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 this uh, range of success or failure. Okay, success is down downward movement from 690 a share. That's success, not $69 a share, not $700 a share, 690 a share or lower is all they can make. Okay, what can they lose? As high as it goes, they can lose the upside. If it goes to $16.90, they'll be down $1.7 billion from here. It goes up to $26.90. They lose $20 a share, $3.4 billion. You name the price, goes to $106 a share in the next two years, and they're still short, 170 million share, they will lose $17 billion. Yeah, they will be wiped out. Uh, there's no limit to the loss. There's a limit to the gain, and you're at 690 now. What 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 can you get out of this now? Another 20 cents, 40 cents? Will they all try to buy back the stock the minute it hits six dollars and twenty-five cents, or six fifty-one, or six oh one, or where is the magic number? And how in green's earth, how in God's green earth are 170 million shares going to be acquired at six dollars a share in one trade? Who who has who has 170 million shares to sell these guys or to, to let them buy it back? I, 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 don't, I don't see it. If these guys were trying to buy back 10% of their short position every day, they would need to buy 17 million shares every day back now to get out in 10 trading days. That takes two weeks, okay? That would be through the end of this month. So we'd now be into April and the countdown to earnings are well underway. There is no way these guys are going to get out in the next 10 days. They're greedy. They're smart, but they're also stupid. There's both kinds here. Uh, but the greed factor, just like GameStop, they, they didn't buy GameStop back at, when it got down to 280 $2.80. And they still didn't buy it back. 75 million shorted out of 70 million existing. These guys here are just the same. They're exactly the same mentality. But they can't possibly be sitting there going, oh, they're going out of business. Uh, this this uh, SoFi company is like Blockbuster. It's going out of business. I don't think so. This is not a brick and mortar bank. No, these guys are going to get much larger and much more expensive. But at the moment, at this minute in time, shorters can sit back and go, we're winning. Everyone else is losing. That's what they can say right now. These shares hit about 12 bucks a share. I will bet you that 98% of all shareholders, by the time this stock hits 12 bucks, will be up on the stock because most people who pay, paid more than $12 have long averaged down. There are a handful left that don't have less than a $12 average on this stock. I would contend that a vast majority of shareholders of this company are sitting at six to $8 average costs vast majority of retail investors and probably institutions at 12 bucks a share 95 percent of the players are up at 15 a share 98 percent at 20 a share 99.5 percent at 25 and every and over everybody is up because it's never been that higher and beyond so the shorters will sooner or later be the only ones 
who are vulnerable because everyone else is in the chips. And you guys are going to start writing options because I'm going to yell at you to write options when we hit 12 to 15 bucks a share. Just stand by and away we go. And you can take that money and buy more stock if you want and write more options. Get ready to rumble, kids. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, thank you all for being here. Man, I love it. Uh, it's great to have you around. It means it's bargoon time here. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Here we go. Judge is saying uh, Adobe uh, put credit spread. Uh, April, um, I got a 43460 um, on the Adobe. We're at 499. We're at 500 right now. We just broke 500 a share. This is a beautiful trade. This is an absolutely beautiful trade. Uh, well behind the stock. $30 spread. A nice little credit there. Well done. Uh, Richard Carlin, keep dropping so far. I got more at 687. Splare, isn't tomorrow GameStop's earnings? No, next week, eight days. Uh, Vilbus, I'm really enjoying. Uh, my 4.6% interest, interest on my savings in my SoFi account. That's awesome. Swear. Uh, it's next week, 26. So it looks like next Tuesday. Correct. Um, welcome all to the show and the party. Um, yes, we're back to 500 a share on Adobe. Uh, very good. Um, SoFi, 688. Uh, Uber, 75.12, down 95 cents. Uh, SoFi volume, by the way, 7.6 million in, four, in 13, 17 minutes. Not heavy. The low, 686. We're here. We're right here on very light volume. The Dow is up 61. Adobe up 750. And NVIDIA up $45 a share to 921 a share. I know someone in Italy that might even be coming out of this trade if he's still hanging in there. I wonder if he has been hanging in there. Has he been folding his arms? I sure hope so. I'll, we'll find out soon enough. I hope we do. Um, Robert Benson, uh, Ryan Cohen should do a Michael Saylor buy Bitcoin and put uh, at a, at put put it on the balance sheet. GameStop would moon Savage of Wall Street. SoFi stinkers deployed at six fifty one. Come on, baby, give it to me. Give it to me at six fifty one. I dare you. I think uh, Ryan Cohen should be buying SoFi right now. He's got one point two billion in cash. And he should just be buying up this stock right here. Um, Put in bids of a hundred thousand at a time. Buy buy a hundred thousand. That's six eighty eight. Hundred thousand six eighty seven. Hundred thousand six eighty six. Just buy stock. Just just buy. Buy it. <coughs> Thing is, he has one point two billion in cash. <coughs> Excuse me. He could buy over a hundred million shares. Would only cost him seven hundred million dollars. He could buy 160 million shares, 16% of the company. He could put that in this GameStop. Can you imagine if GameStop came up with an SEC release and revealed to the market that we own 15% of SoFi? <laughs> the video game company, the video game brick and mortar company would own 15% of SoFi stock. All that free trading stock would be off the market. 150 million shares easily off the market. Plus the 100 million they just evaporated off the market with this financing deal. That's 250 million gone. We're down to 650 million free trading left. And there's 170 million short. Oops. Uh, we're almost at 30% short squeeze. Oh, 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 man. And can you imagine if, if, uh, if Cohen uh, bought uh, 150 million shares of this thing? And uh, through, uh, through GameStop and then Cohen's network, all the followers of Cohen, and that includes you guys. We own 150 million more of the stock. That's now 400 million gone. 150 plus 150 plus 100. That's 400 million of the 900 million gone. There's only 400. Uh, there's only, uh, sorry, three, three, four. There's only 500 million left trading and 170 million are short against that. Oh, oh, oh man. That would be something. Whatever happened to that GameStop NFT project? I, I don't think it's around anymore. BP. So how are the shorters still keeping GameStop and AMC down? If with all the so fights requires more money happening with their I don't think uh, GameStop and AMC is being kept down by shorters at all. I, I think that it's a lack of retail buying right now. Certainly on AMC's part, they're a financial basket case. Uh, with GameStop, it's just a lack of activity. It's a lack of press releases, something we've talked about a billion times around here. Bobby wrote up um, an Adobe put spread Friday. Adobe, uh, 740. Uh, I don't think you did that. You didn't do an Adobe put spread. You didn't NVIDIA, maybe. 
I would say you did an NVIDIA put spread. Uh, uh, with those numbers. Um, the Splare seems to be forgotten. Splare, well, Uncle Bruce, the only thing I can imagine after cooperation with SoFi and GameStop. Oh, my God. Uh, Robert Benson, Green Bitcoin and GameStop. Oh, yes, Splare. A GameStop cash available everywhere in the world. There you go. Um, welcome all. Uh, the Dow's up 61. The Adobe, $500.60, up 814. That's only the beginning of a recovery. NVIDIA, up 41 $919 a share. Giddy up, everybody. Uber up uh, down to 99 cents. Uber at 75 a week. SoFi, 689 now. 689 on SoFi. The low trade of the session, 686, as far as I can tell you. And uh, we've got uh, a volume now on SoFi of uh, 8.3 million shares. Where's the bottom and what kind of snapback rally did we get? That's what I um we got john uh, john harpster i like the 117 25 22. i have no idea what he's talking about uh, bobby uh okay my bad no no i didn't do um, a credit spread on adobe at 737.40 i did it at uh, 434.40 okay adobe 434.40 well done you're at 500 a share giddy up nice going um let's see what else is going on here bobby you're right uh, i had nvidia on my mind just typing like that it's it's okay my friend you're we're all good uh, there are opportunities on nvidia there's opportunities on uh, on adobe here for sure adobe very good opportunities because of that that drop was ridiculous way over way over cooked on the downside i can see a 50 60 dollar pop back without any issues and if you're sitting at 430 uh, 430s, 440s, uh, 450s, 430s. Oh my, I think you're going to make some nice coin on the spreads. Just check them out for yourself, kids, and check and see what uh, what kind of potential they have. Yeah, we're up 80 points now on the Dow. Um, following uh, everything here, um, 1398 on GameStop, uh, 408 on Rocket Lab, uh, 688 so far, down 15 cents, low of 686. We've got. Uh, the Dow up 77, S&P up 45, and NASDAQ up 227 to start the morning, the first 23 minutes of the day. Welcome all to the show. Tell me, where are you watching me from? Where are you? Where are you guys located? I'd love to know. What cities are you in? Uh, what countries? What's your temperature going to be today? Um, how are you doing out there? Welcome all to the program. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Robert, uh, 100 so far at 687. I am stealing this paper. If any of you are doing this, 686 is a great price to try to get this at. 681 if you get lucky. I don't know if you'll get that lucky, but boy, yeah, stink bits. One penny behind a nice round number on the stink bit. Why not? Bobby, all the spreads are way behind the market. Um, NVIDIA, um, ADVE, and ELF. Collection time for the next few weeks, okay? <laughs> giddy up everybody we've got uh, ai down 28 we have uh we have uh, spire down 18 cents we've got apple up 464 now uh end face down a buck amd is down a dollar 13. netflix still up 660 tesla up 322. we've got um, uh unity uh down 51 cents google's still up 920 uh, it and face uh, it and apple doing fine moderna it's up a dollar cisco up 35 cents Pfizer down 17, IBM down 29, HBQ down 42. Microsoft up a buck and a half this morning. That's turned around. Um, Amazon up a dollar 13. Home Depot uh, down 62 cents. Avanic Semiconductors at 222.24 up 440. Goldman down 240. Boeing down 440. Meta, the Facebook shares are up 519 at 289 a share. Target up 73. JP Morgan up 7 cents. Costco's up 380. Walmart down Four Disney down a dollar, uh, up a dollar twenty nine. Pardon me. Uh, that Boeing, yeah, one seventy eight down four forty. We've got um, AMC down four and a half. DraftKings up thirty two cents. Royal Caribbean up twenty four. Great to see you all here. Up eighty odd on the Dow now. Uh, trying to keep up with Nasdaq, which is all by itself up a one point four percent, up two hundred twenty six points. NVIDIA is the, the, the leading the way, really, um, 911 a share, uh, with Adobe coming in second here with a 501 price now on Adobe, definitely being uh, sucked up. And, of course, Apple, Google, I mean, look at the Magnificent 7. You see the, uh, the improvement here uh, all over the place. Tesla is up. 
and uh, yeah, Google and uh, and uh, uh, where are we? Where are we? Microsoft, Amazon, they're all higher. They're all up. Uh, Facebook, they're all up. The Magnificent Seven and NVIDIA and Adobe, uh, there's some power here. There's money coming into those guys. John Harpster sell $22 puts, 117 slash 25. I sure wish I knew what stock you're talking about. I, I'm just, you leaving me alone here. I have no idea, buddy. Help me. Uh, JR, keep tanking Tesla. Make me rich with my covered calls, uh, says JR. Giddy on up, kids. There you go. Uh, thank you all. For, uh, for being with me this morning and, and hanging out with us. Um, the uh, the stocks that I like for uh, for credit spreads right now, put credit spreads, Adobe, Google, Apple, and NVIDIA. Those four particular, I'm really happy about something for you to consider. On the uh, Tesla, you might want to do call credit spreads, uh, but way ahead of the market. Uh, with regard to Spider and Qs, uh, you want to definitely be 10% uh, out of the market minimum either direction um, but I think you might be safer writing uh, calls um, rather than puts but uh, I wouldn't be too close at all I'd be I'd give it a healthy respectful distance no question about it congratulations all of you who've taken classes and are in the middle of doing the classes right now there are 17 of them take your time do them as you like them uh, as you feel comfortable with how much time you can give it uh, if you have any questions about your classes or you your links aren't working like they should, let me know. Send me a private email. We'll get it figured out with you, and we'll get you straightened away. Keep you uh, on top of what you're doing here, okay? Thank you all uh, uh, for being here. If you want to become a uh, member of the channel, um, part of the Discord group, uh, join this channel. Um, become a Gold Bagel member and send me an email. Send me a private email. Let me know. I just, you know, I'm a Gold Bagel member. I'd like to become part of the Discord group as well. Uh, the the Goldies over there talk to each other and they compare notes and uh, we'd love to have you there. So I, I'm not on that channel, by the way. It's not, I don't run it. I'm not part of it. I'm on the air here and then you're on Discord on your own with your, your fellow, fellow viewers and you can talk about me all you want. <laughs> <laughs> and figure out what you're doing and compare notes and then uh, you commiserate with yourself some of you are commiserating why don't we do a one-on-one -on -one with bruce why don't we get a couple of us together here let's do a three-on-one or a four-on-one with him and uh, let's do that uh, some of you are, are, are looking at that let me know we'll see when we can get together all right thank you all um let's see what about iron condors bruce i'm really just jr uh, can you do iron condors on sbo Yes, of course, but again, you want to be well ahead or behind this market. You, you've really got to give it room, and uh, you want to give it time. Um, look at it this way. If you create a, uh, a credit spread, calls, puts, or both, um, you want to have you know a month or more of time, maybe 60 days, so that you have time to adjust if necessary to do adjustments. Uh, don't be going in too short. Uh, John, uh, Bruce, I'm doing SoFi. Um, uh, sell $22 puts on SoFi. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, Robert, uh, does anyone know when 23andMe has to do something to get their stock over a dollar? It's in the next month or two, I thought. Uh, I don't have a date, though. And if anyone does, do share. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's sooner rather than later, I think. they got to do something. 687 on the uh, on the uh, SoFi 687 688 right now 1398 on GameStop 406 on Rocket Lab down five and a half cents. Dude, I just rolled Nvidia out uh, on my spreads, Bruce. I moved to 775 785 April 19th expiry, 130 dollar credit. So you just uh, you rolled from probably March to April or or, or something later to. April. Way to go! Uh, way to go! Seven seventy-five, seven eighty-five on a uh, on a nine hundred and ten dollars stock. Uh, good protection there, David. A loading boat on SoFi at this price. Uh, it will probably see six fifty. That's where my next where the support is. But I'm loading up. Giddy up! We're at six eighty-six over there. Uber's down two ten at seventy-three ninety-seven. We got Nvidia at nine oh eight seventy now up thirty bucks. Adobe five oh two forty up nine ninety four. 
uh, like the, uh, the Adobe as well, as well as the NVIDIA, to do put credit spreads for sure. Uh, absolutely. $13.99 on GameStop down a quarter. The, que <coughs> the question is now, <clears throat> as the week rolls on and we come up with earnings next Tuesday for GameStop, will, be, will we begin to see a little up number, uh, uplift on GameStop? Could we get in this 15, 17 neighborhood between now and next Tuesday? Is that a possibility? If so, what do you do? Uh, do you roll your contracts forward? Have you got 15s out there that you're going to do a thing on? Have you got cash secured puts that you've written at um, 14, 15, 16, and you might uh, take them out? I mean, you've got, you've got choices here. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll compare notes. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, Robert says, SoFi looks way oversold on my charts. And there you are. That's that's part of the speculation of this market. Uh, what can I say? 688 right now, 689 on SoFi. You never know where the bottom is and when it is. It can be a subtle little movement. It could be that first dime that just kind of happens. You don't even realize it. And a week later, you go, wait a minute, we're like 40 cents off the low. That happened last week. I think we had the low last week. And then it goes up another 30 cents. You go, I missed it. I missed it. It can happen at any time. Uh, 10 million volume on SoFi at the moment. And we're at 688, 689. That's that's all. Adobe five hundred dollars eighty five cents. It's getting ready to take another jump over there. I think um, that might be the case on Adobe five hundred one seventy two. We're seeing dollar jumps on Adobe. Like it'll jump seventy cents up, down, up a dollar, down seventy cents, up a buck twenty, down. You know, it really is volatile, but it is coming on. It's up nine twenty six right now. NVIDIA up 33 32 $911 on NVIDIA. Thank you all for being part of this channel. Uh, the thumbs ups, the alerts, uh, telling us how long you've been a member, uh, becoming a member, upgrading your memberships from regular member to gold level member. Thank you all of you who have been showing support of this channel. 259 thumbs ups are now on the go. I thank you. 405 of you are here. Welcome from wherever you are. It's great to see you here, everybody. Yeah, classes are the bomb, says David Duff. Uh, rock and roll. I've been noticing you've been grabbing them. You have been grabbing these. Um, uh, the folks that, uh, I'll just put it to you this way. Uh, those of you who want to know, <laughs> are the classes worth it? Let's just say this. Um, the viewers that make the most money writing options on this channel are the ones who've taken all the classes. It's as, it's as simple as that. That's whether the classes did it, whether one-on-ones did it, whether just exposing this channel to you for three years has done it, a combination of all three. But the fact remains that the viewers that have done the best at writing options have They've watched all 17 of them, and they can rewatch them anytime they want. And that just is a fact. Uh, Robert, totally forgot to give Uncle Bruce a thumbs up there. Uh, dude, just getting back to it, Uncle Bruce, uh, recovering from jet lag um, after my trip. That was right to China, wasn't it? I'll put in more spreads here in a bit. I, I, I wasn't trading much there 13 hours earlier as it was. Welcome, sir. Um, and I'm dying to find out how things went for you. Savage of Wall Street, come on, trying, trying to buy back some unity. A Jan 25 cover calls. I sold them for $14, says uh, Savage of Wall Street. Stinkers are at 301. Come on, give it to me. Come on. Come on. I want to lock in this little gain here. Nice going, pal. Um, Unity. Uh, wow. Uh, 25s. Unity right now is trading at um, 2556. So uh, Savage of Wall Street wrote Unities when the stock was higher than this. Uh, and so is about to score 11 big ones on each contract. Sweet ride, buddy. Sweet ride. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Up 103 now on the Dow. We've got a definite gain here. 113. Uh, the Dow's coming on a little more. The NASDAQ is up 1.2%. The Dow's up 0.28. So uh, the, the, the NASDAQ has 388 more points to add to catch up. Um, <coughs> welcome all. We're, we're up 44 on the S&P, up 0.87. 687, 688 on, on SoFi. 499.96 on Adobe. We're hovering around. 500 now 908 on the nvidia up 30 dollars uh games up 1396 and rocket lab 406 and a half 
There you go. Welcome, dude, back to the show. Uh, it's nice to see you here. BP, uh, but it's the market predicting a crash in 2024. Is the market predicting a crash? Uh, market commentators seem to think so, and markets have been tanking last few weeks. This is always what happens. Uh, we can't have a correction. We can't have a slow, slight pullback. We have to have every week be a higher week. We just have to. Because if we don't, well, it's Armageddon. It's the end of the world every time. It was this when I it was this way when I was a broker in 78, 79, and it's this way now in 2024. It never ends. People admit that markets go up, markets go down. They just can't stand it. <laughs> Commentators admit, oh yeah, markets go up, markets go down, they fluctuate all the time, but they can't stand living through it. They want to over predict good stuff, over predict bad stuff. Uh, predict Armageddon, predict, you know, everything else. Uh, they just can't get out of their own way. So I just say welcome to the party. It's the Nakatomi Tower. We happen to be barefoot today, but I think in the end we're going to win. So what can I say? Let's go to the roof and see what they're doing up there. How about that? <laughs> welcome all to the channel. Welcome to this YouTuber's tiny little following of diehard option writers, uh, credit spread creators, cash secured put writers, poor man covered call writers, deep in the money call owners. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the program. And uh, let's just make some dinero, like Alberto likes to say. Uh, take your fair share off of these these morons that are just handing it to you. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, so far now, 691, um, 10.9 million, um, you know, it, it's not heavy volume, which tells me we're not going lower, we're going higher. Uh, there's nothing for sale here. If Ryan Cohen wanted to buy 150 million shares of SoFi, he can't get it at 690 a share. He can't, he can't get it. He can get dribs and drabs, you know, he could have bought half a million this morning, maybe three quarters of a million, sure. But was he able to buy 8 million of the 10 million? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 not a chance. If he tries to buy 3 million shares today, he'll run this to 710, 720. If he tries to buy 3, 4 million tomorrow, he'll run it at 730. If he tries to buy 4, 5 million after that, he'll run it to 740, 50. You know, we'll be at 750 in no time. Uh, and that's assuming he's the only institutional buyer trying to buy this stuff. Um, hard to do, hard to do quietly. Um, it's not heavy. It's not, it's not serious volume. There aren't, there aren't 10 million shares for sale at every penny on SoFi. That is not the case. We've traded 10 million for the day. Uh, so, you know, we're at 692. We're coming on right now. 693. Here we go. Another penny. Honey Bee, Uncle Bruce, back in the 70s and 80s, there was a kind of, Magnificent seven. Well, the, in the days of the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, they had an expression known as the nifty 50. The nifty 50, the top 50 stocks of the S&P 500 was what was in vogue at that time. The nifty 50. And that lasted about a decade. That, that was kind of a catchphrase. And a lot of people were sort of following those 50 stocks majority. And then there were those following 50 to 100 more, but uh, not like it's not as sophisticated then as it is now. But yeah, that was the normal. I remember when I became a broker, the hot stocks of 7980, oil and gas, oil and gas, and then gold, gold miners, because gold prices were really surging in those days. Inflation was running rampant. And so that was where the money went to. And people were debating, should I buy gold stocks, oil stocks, or should I buy high dividend uh, yielding stocks, or should I just buy treasury notes? Should I put my money into CDs, you know, at that time? High interest rates at that time were a dominant thing, but so was high inflation. And there were stocks outdoing inflation big time. And so uh, we had a lot, in Calgary, we had a lot of exposure to hot, hot oil stocks that were just um, tearing it up. Because we would see prices go from 10 a barrel to 40 a barrel to 20 a barrel to 45 a barrel to back and forth, hot and cold, hot and cold, winning, losing, winning, losing. That was the, the at that time. Robert, what was the biggest stock in the 70s? I'm just talking about that. 
And then uh, in the 70s, then the 80s and the 90s, it shifted into technology. Um, get, uh, Apple went public in the early uh, early 80s, and they caught on in 82, 84. We had Microsoft come out in the 80s. We had Cisco come out. Um, we had the breakup of the big telephone company, of course. Uh, Ma Bell had to be broken up into all kinds of pieces. And that was the new thing. Then cell phone technology, cell phone providers, cell phone makers, computer builders, compact computer, uh, Hewlett Packard, um, Dell Computer, all these guys came into the Vogue. Software creators, Oracle and others, uh, big, big computer system like IBM and, and Cisco. Uh, this was where it was. That's where it was at. Who was out? Automobile stocks were out. Steel stocks were out. Um, um, uh, big, uh, fi uh, big factory type companies were out. Uh, they, they were the Rust Belt was happening in the Midwest and the East Coast, in the Northeast of the United States, and, and so in Ontario and Canada, factories were being closed left, right, and center. Furniture, furniture factories, television manufacturing, um, shoemakers, clothiers, uh, anything to do with factories, you know, out, 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 and it shifted overseas. Some were winners, some went out of business. Completely different uh, things. Um, and then the beginning of, uh, in the 90s, the beginning of Costco. Priceline, Costco, um, uh, Walmart started to go public. Kmart was still selling. Uh, Sears and Roebuck, um, JCPenney, uh, Macy's, all these stocks were competing for the retail customer. And as time went on and the internet came into being, we had the internet providers, the, 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 uh, the American Online, the uh, Netscape, the uh, Yahoo's, all these providers. Google showed up. Amazon, of course, in its iteration. And then, of course, uh, it all shifted. It all shifted to online convenience, and uh, and we began to notice that. Then we saw PayPal show up, and we saw the the Visa, Mastercard stocks do very well. Banking, uh, the, the the regulations on banking were loosened up, so banks went nuts. And of course, that created the big meltdown in 07, 27, 2, 2008. Um, we had a huge run on, on financials uh, prior to that. Trillions made and lost. And, uh, and here we are today. Uh, we're now a digital um, uh, environment. We're AI headed. We're headed for AI. And we're all at home uh, buying stuff at home, selling stuff at home, working from home. I mean, the, the ever-changing economy and world we're in unbelievable uh what can i say all right uh let's go let's go let's go like that we're coming up a little sis player maybe uh where what are we at now 694 on sofi we're just down a dime uh gamestop 1410 just broke through 14 we're only down 14 cents on gamestop rocket lab down one penny that's it uber down 119 we were down two bucks on that we're up uh, 35 bucks on uh, nvidia we're up seven on uh, adobe dow up 129 there you go um i live in the uh, part of the rust belt upstate new york says honeybee starting in the late 80s many factories closed ge left a major air force base closed this area just lost remington arms as well yeah and uh you know, we saw we saw it all. We saw, uh, of course, auto plants. The oldest ones got shut down. The most inefficient plants got shut down. Shoe companies, um, uh, clothing ma uh, manufacturers, uh, refrigerator, uh, stoves, microwave assemblers, um, any appliance uh, companies, they, they got whacked. Uh, furniture makers got whacked. Um, Many, many mom and pop uh, or regional companies got whacked, uh, were into industrial, light industrial companies got taken out. Yeah, it, it became so much more efficient to have stuff made in, 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 in Mexico, have stuff made in China, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, Indonesia, the Philippines, then Vietnam, of course, China itself. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh for clothing. I mean, Pakistan and Bangladesh for clothing by far. Uh, yeah, we we uh, we went global, and North Americans thrived with this. Uh, yes, there were Americans who lost their jobs. Canadians and North Americans, you know, Americans lost their jobs from from factory jobs. But 
the entire population of North America benefited from lower priced goods, uh, which kept inflation in check. Inflation actually came back to North America in a big way when North America signed the free trade agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. And uh, Honeybee says most people around here now hold government jobs or remote IT jobs. Yeah. And um, um, with imports coming in to replace our domestically made stuff, prices kept were kept down. Because we could we could not afford a five thousand dollars stove, but we could afford a five ninety nine stove. A North American made stove would be nine ninety nine. An imported Chinese made stove five ninety nine at Home Depot, Lowe's. Volume buyers, volume sellers. Um, the Amazons of the world uh, brought us volume and cheap prices. And so North America's inflation rate stayed low. The currency, our currencies, Canadian dollar, American dollar stayed strong and that kept everything coming in cheaper and that's what helped keep inflation low we had zero interest rates to to help the economy that's how this game works and here we are today with five percent interest rates that's kind of normal actually it's not high people think it's high but it isn't and um we're still benefiting from imports look at china now china is being accused of cutting prices by letting their currency drop uh, which allows imports into the United States and Canada at far cheaper prices than we can ever make it here. And here we go. We've got this inflation game being played right now. And uh, certain countries are, are getting whacked on their currencies. Um, again, third world, where we do a lot of importing from. You know, sweatshirts and T-shirts, you don't make them in America. You don't, you don't produce this in the United States. Are you out of your mind? A cap? A baseball cap? Have you looked at your latest licensed NFL, NCAA, Major League Baseball, basketball, hockey. Look at your caps that you like to wear outside. How much, where is it made? Where are the hats made that you go? Have you ever go into a Lids store at a shopping mall? You ever walked into one of those? Ever? And have you ever looked at the, 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 the tag on the inside of the hat? Where is it made? Nothing made in the USA. There's nothing made in Canada. There's nothing made in Mexico. It's Bangladesh, it's Pakistan, it's India, it's third world uh, labor, super, super cheap. A, 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 a baseball cap for the New York Yankees is produced for a buck 25, all in, shipped to America in unbelievable bulk containers. And you go into your lid store to buy a Yankees cap, how much are those? 40 bucks? 45 bucks, 50 bucks. How do you think Lids pays the rent in the most expensive shopping malls in America? How can they afford the rent there? And the staff, minimum wage now, 12 to 15 to 20 bucks an hour, depending on what state you're in. State taxes, city business taxes, insurance. These stores need to generate a thousand a day in revenue to stay alive, but they better have an 80% profit margin. And Lids has it because Lids makes stuff overseas, pays a royalty to Major League Baseball, and makes a fortune. And they've driven everyone else out of the business. There are no mom and pop sports shops anymore. You can't buy baseball caps at your local strip mall um, around, not, certainly not with variety. You might find a Yankee cap anywhere in North America, fair enough. But you want to buy real licensed styled hats that are all the rage? Lids. You're going to Lids. You're going to uh, Champ Sports. You're going to Foot Locker maybe for a couple of them, but Lids owns that market, and we pay dearly for this. That's the way it is. Yeah. Anyway, fun stuff, kids. Um, uh, we've got a few minutes to go before the show's over. How are you doing? Are you having any fun writing options today? Uh, thank you all for uh, being part of my channel today. We got the thumbs up meter showing now, two hundred and seventy-eight thumbs ups. Thank you all, very very much. Appreciate it. Awful kind of you folks. Uh, keep them coming in if you can. I love it. Uh, welcome all to the party, pals. We are uh, we're pushing uh, the thumbs up numbers around. I love it. Um, glad you're here. Uh, thank you for subscribing to this channel. Uh, so many of you have subscribed lately. I appreciate it very much. Um, thank you. And thank you for the shout outs, letting us know and letting me know how you're doing and, and what you're up to and how your trades are going. 
thank you all. We'll do the best we can to keep you posted. Those of you who are looking for one-on-ones, you keep me posted when you want to have one, and we'll get it together, and we'll uh, we'll try to help you figure out where you're at, where you're headed, where you're going, try to get you on the right path to make nothing but money in this market. Um, NVIDIA up, up to 909 here. 909.44, Adobe 501.57, very good uh, markets over there. Uber still a down a down dollar fourteen. SoFi at 6.94, 6.95, down about nine eight nine cents. GameStop down fifteen cents, but we're back to fourteen oh nine, and uh, we're down about five cents on Rocket Lab. We've got AI down just twenty one cents. We got the spiders up five bucks. Q's up six ninety. I don't know how long it'll last, but they are doing well today. A uh, spider down fifteen cents. Apple up 455. It and Google are doing well today. Google is up uh, 8905 at 151. Uh, Enphase just went green up 33 cents. AMD is down a dollar one. Netflix up 1380. Tesla up 628. Looking good at 169. Going for 170 on the Tesla. Matterport up six and a half. Smart Rand up one and a half. Owens Corning up three. Um, we got Google up nine bucks. Moderna up two seventy. Cisco up sixty two cents. Other gainers: Microsoft up four dollars. We got Amazon up one sixty one. Vanig up three forty. We're up seven bucks on Facebook. Target up one forty nine. JP Morgan up eighty three. Costco up four dollars. Disney up one twenty three. Uh, DraftKings up one twenty nine. Royal Caribbean up one twenty seven. Congratulations all. Welcome to the party today. Nice to have you all with us here as we are following uh, this very interesting market today. Up 136 on the Dow, 53-point gain on S&P. That's 1%. And we're up 1.6%, 254-point gain on NASDAQ. Very nice day today on NASDAQ and holding a nice uh, rally here. Um, oil up 58 cents at this moment in time, 6 96 on SoFi. It looks like we're going to take a run at seven, perhaps. We might just take a run at seven. And if we do, we are within seven cents of the high of the day on SoFi. Uh, 696 right now, down just six cents, six or seven cents. Very close to coming back here. Uh, Juan, thumbs ups, everybody. Uh, dude, Japan was really amazing, Bruce, just uh, how functional everything was. Even beating Europe with train and transit efficiency. Tokyo was a lot of fun. It is a city. It's a country I dearly want to go and see. I dearly want to go to China, to Japan. Uh, Hector, neat, 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 snowboarder, um, uh, sold cash secured put on Adobe for um, 419 505 strike. I got a $1,930 credit to write this put contract. Hope for an up move and I make a few dinero. This is good stuff. Even at 502, it's only worth three bucks. And so it's only worth three hundred dollars. The rest is time. Uh, you're looking good here. I like the I like your uh, your um, your um, your odds of making money on this trade. I think are very high. Uh, nice going, deep value, nice trade, indeed. If you write a credit spread, you can write a, 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 a put credit spread on Adobe. Uh, 440s, 450s, 460s, um, anything like that. 470s, 450s, uh, good for April. If you can pull a spread out of that, uh, take a look at it. Write more than one or two or three or five, whatever whatever comfort level you have. If you got 20 grand lying around with a $20 spread, you can write 10 of these. Uh, if you bring in $450, you bring in $4,500. Bucks. Uh, not bad for a month uh, position on Adobe. It's worthy of a consideration. Check your option chains and see what you can do. NVIDIA, you want to definitely be looking at 750 to 800 range for uh, for credit spreads, put credit spreads well behind on NVIDIA. Um, look for some nice premiums there, April, May, uh, by all means. So $20 spread, 30, 40, whatever is comfortable for you. Take a good look at that. Yes, NVIDIA, definitely poten potential. Definitely potential. Uh, so far, 695, 694, 696 range on so far. 503 on Adobe, I think. I think we're at 503. Uh, can't be 100% sure, but it looks like we have about a 503 market on Adobe. Um, we'll keep you posted on all of this as best we can, everybody. Thank you for joining in here. Yeah, Adobe holding in here. 
Uh, right here, 503.30, up 1080. This is uh, pushing highs of the day, I think. I think we are pushing the highs of the day on Adobe. We're up 160 on the Dow now. And um, let's take a look here. Hang on. We've got, there we go. There we go. We're, we're up 57 now on S&P, up 1.1%. NASDAQ up 1.6%, up 270 now, and the Dow is up 0.44. So the Dow is still only a quarter of what uh, NASDAQ is doing. The Dow should really be up 650 plus points to equal NASDAQ's exuberance at the moment. Uh, speaking of exuberance, exuberance. All right. Uh, yeah. Giddy up, everybody. 695 on SoFi. Uh, giddy up, everybody. And welcome to the party, pals. It's lovely to have you here. Going for 504 on Adobe. We're up over 11 now on Adobe. It's moving again. Those credit spreads, and those cash secured puts are looking good on Adobe. Good, good going, everybody. Um, let's go. Let's go. What else have we got here? Um, and well done, a, a dude uh, 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 and others. Uh, thank you for, for these um, comments. Uh, dude, I love your comments with your travel. Uh, I'm envious of where you've been. Uh, Glad to see this. Appreciate these updates. Uh, okay. Yeah, 695 on on SoFi down nine eight nine cents. GameStop down only five cents now. 1419 on GameStop. We're coming back on. We might be green on GameStop at any time. Uh 13.3 million SoFi traded. A GameStop volume now at 1419 a share. One million shares. That's the, that's all on on games of one million, and we're only down a nickel now. Uh, coming back on, okay, everybody, up 165. Oh, oh, trouble! The hand of death just came through the door. The hand of death. Ah, uh, here she is. Hi there, Auntie Jen. Hi there. <clears throat> uh, we're doing. We're not doing anything. No, we're, no, no, we're fine. Uh, you all behaving yourself. <clears throat> put your toys away. Uh, we're we're fine. Uh, everything's good. Uh, no, there's no problem here. Uh, how you doing? Good. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that? How are those hips of yours doing? Hips are doing good. They are doing good. Right? They are doing good. Yeah, yeah. We we can go out to Costco now. We can go out. I to did a Trader mall Joe's. crawl. She did a mall crawl with her daughter. <laughs> That's it. We went to the pool yesterday, and I'm in that uh, jacuzzi, that the hot, the hot tub there. I'm just baking away, just Bumping. loosening up. She's in the pool doing her exercises. Yeah, baby. Those are the best. This is what is happening here. It's coming together. We're we're we got to come up with a date. I know, and I have a, a date, date in date. mind. I haven't told you yet. Maybe. I have a date in mind oh. that would be in May. May. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, and that gives people lots of time. Oh yeah, yeah. Because we're we're starting to pack up I know. here. We got people coming. We got people. We got yeah. Yeah, people so, want to see us. They're yeah. coming on down now. Um, but me. I know. Okay. They they didn't want. To, well, I mean, <laughs> in January I just had surgery, so that was. <laughs> yeah, they weren't coming in here in January. We weren't we weren't really inviting everyone to see us in January. Yes. Yeah. Do you know it's spring mm. in two days? No way. Way. Wait, well, March had, 21st. We moved the clocks, so yeah, that signifies a change, isn't that great? Yeah, I love it. I, I'm I, I'm always asking people, where are you watching me from, and what's your temperature? Are you in spring weather yet? This is good stuff. We're going to the 80s now. Well, Calgary's in spring weather today, uh, but then tomorrow they're back to winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yikes! And we know in Calgary that winter isn't done until after the May snowstorm. True. A uh, JR's going hand of death, really. <laughs> Auntie Jen, really? Come on now. I got this white thing here. I can't. I, it drives me nuts. Well, got, so I see him on. I see him on camera, and I, I just, I can't get her. Uh, Richard, uh, good morning, Auntie Jen. Auntie B, Auntie Jen, hey, uh, Jr. Hey, hey, AJ, Splair, Auntie Jen, hey, wishing you a relaxed day as well. Thank you, friends. Thank uh, you, Splair. Just coming into the end of our show here. We have three hundred twenty-eight folks hanging out. It's beautiful in Germany. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful in Germany soon, well, but maybe not. Maybe not March, but April is gonna be nice in Germany. Yeah. I'm sure, a uh, beach boy. I advise lemon pie, Uncle Bruce, okay. uh, to get you over the hand of death phobia. <laughs> Hi there, Andy Jen. Don't mind him; just Crazy. a homeless Canadian Boy. ranting. That's all it is. See there. You go. Yeah, it said lemon pie have uh, lime, maybe key lime pie. We're in Lyme today. Those could be fighting words for JR or for uh, Beach Boy. I don't know about that. 
I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a we had a, we had a relaxing weekend. We we had hoped to have some friends of ours uh, come out, but they had to postpone their trip a little bit. Yeah. So um, uh, we'll see if that uh, comes together sooner. But we're hanging in there. We uh, are. We are. We're taking care of ourselves. I, got, I and, haven't come in and talked you know, to people in a long time. It's been a while since Jen has been through here. Bobby, uh, laugh out loud. Delete your browser info, Uncle Bruce. <laughs> It's too late, Bobby. It's still on the whatever name. We talked about that A. You know what I mean, A? There you have it, A. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, so the women are curling right now for yes, the world are. championships. Yes, they are. And so Jen is watching the Canadian gals very closely. And, and today the mixed doubles is, is on also. Big game world. The mixed doubles are on today. For yeah, the good one. Uh, our first game is against Norway, who is the silver medalist mm. last Olympics. Mm. Uh, we are three and zero. Okay. Yeah. The women are so. two and zero right now, or are they three and zero? Three and zero. Our gals are three and zero for the women's tournament, but today they play we might the world. Have been a mark they play yesterday. the world champs today, Switzerland. We play Switzerland. <laughs> Nobody beats Switzerland lately, so this is going to be something. Switzerland's big, the other undefeated team. <laughs> big, big game coming up for the Canadian gals and Swiss gals. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can't take anybody for. It. Beach for Boy, granted. first rule of Pie Club. Eat. There you <laughs> go. Uh, pie Club. Ooh, pie, pie Club. Club. That sounds good. People were talking about, pie bringing, Club. People were talking about bringing pie to the meet and to greet. meet and greet. If we do it. If we're going to do it. I don't know where we're doing it yet. I have to confirm whether we can do it where we'd yeah, like we're just, to do we're it. just kind of assuming that. We're assuming we can do it, but we have to confirm that before we announce it. So. Yes. Bear with us. Uh, we'll try to figure this out quickly. And we'll remember, we'll talk about that when you're off the air today. Because, mm. you know, yeah. we get doing stuff. We get, st we get stuff. She has me do stuff. And so and all of a sudden I forget before you other know, stuff. Your brain is in another place. Yeah. A fool of a took is asking, Jen, uh, what, what are your thoughts about the Steelers picking up Justin Fields? I think he makes you guys right? a much better team. Right. I think so as well. Um, I like having a little quarterback contest that, to know that that the other guy is is good, and I think uh, I was I was kind of surprised to see that that Chicago let him go. Is Fields a drop back quarterback or is he a scrambler? I I don't know. I okay. I'm not going to say for certainty, but I I think he is uh, that he can scramble. He's a young guy. Okay. Uh, Russell Wilson used to be able to, but he's an old guy he's with many older. injuries behind him. <laughs> right, right. He's more of a drop back guy. But he is a laser thrower. Laser. Laser. So yeah. now what happens? Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. we got a new mm -hmm. old liner who's mm -hmm. supposed to be very good. Because, you know, you, the quarterbacks. You're, you're, your quarterback, your running backs are only as good as your front line. Yeah. Right. Something that a lot of running backs forget. About well, yeah, they uh, they sort of they think to, it's them and not the they guy blocking. Tend to believe it's just them. their talents and no one else's. Yes, 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 yes. the O line, the tight end. You got to have some big guy in front of you. True, true. But yes, they're starting yeah. to do stuff. Things are happening in the Things NFL. Things are happening. Yes, indeed, they're happening in the NFL here. Oh my! Zoom training camp. The question is this year: Will Bruce and Jen do any traveling this year? To see Steeler we'll games. To see a game. Will we go to schedule? Will we go to Pittsburgh and will we go to other cities in and around and mm -hmm. you know do a little trip and follow the Steelers for a while? Or if we did go to Pittsburgh, I think there's someone that we could meet for a sandwich before a game. There is apparently a Pittsburgh viewer here that <laughs> we might be able to rendezvous with. Might might want to just be there. There's possibilities, you know. There's, there's See, certain cities you can have. We could do a meet and greet. Meet and greet. <laughs> we could do a meet and greet in Pittsburgh. Uh, there's a, uh, what's the name of that restaurant? Pirelli's Brothers. Pirelli's Brothers? Pirelli Brothers. Pirelli's Brothers? Pirelli. She knows. I think I'm missing a T in there. Somewhere. Something. Um, but he's not He's not responding to us right now. He might be I, he, not on the air. He's probably not there. Uh, uh, Richard Carlin. DQ. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, Beach Boy, don't know what you're talking about, but hey, Auntie Jen, you had me at laser. <laughs> laser. Laser. <laughs> Beach Boy, you don't watch net NFL? 
in Israel. Uh, Fool of a Took, you should come to the game here in Cincinnati. We could meet for some chili, Cincinnati. Oh, Cincinnati. On to Cincinnati. Uh, we're on to Cincinnati. Um, Believe land. That's what that is. Believe land. <laughs> Hey, hey, ooh, ouch. Uh, hey, when you change your management every year, you know, you yeah, just, well, you know, you know, we don't do that. <laughs> it's true. The Steelers sort of set yes. it and forget it. Is uh, Russell Wilson going to give Mike his first losing season? Or, <laughs> That's what all the talk was about. Or is Fields the answer? Or is Fields the answer? Right. Yeah. Right. Alberto, uh, Auntie Jen, how you doing? How are you doing, doing out there? Uh, Richard oh. Leaveland. He liked Leave. that. Leave, Leaveland. <laughs> Leaveland, no. Uh, Jay Leave Boy. Leaveland. Uh, Primanti Brothers is the Primanti. place. Primanti. I knew I was Primanti. missing a T. Primanti. Yeah, yes. Yes. Meet and greet at Primanti Brothers. Putting uh, that French fries on your sub. Ooh. <laughs> and cheese and everything else. Oh, and coleslaw. God. Like coleslaw. It's a handful. Oh, my it's a handful. It's oh. one of those where you pick it up. And you can't put it down now. Yeah, you, you got nah, it now. You, nah, yeah, you got to yeah, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> dumb bears. Uh, <laughs> dumb bears. Dumb bears, dumb bears, dumb bears, dumb bears. Oh, my goodness. We have to go to Chicago. We got to go to Chicago. I have viewers from Chicago. I have for years had Chicago viewers. Well, you know, I tell people <laughs> we've been to Chicago. Through the airport. <laughs> we've been at O'Hare. <laughs> We really, we really have to go to Chicago. What a town that place is. There's a lot of places we've only ever been to. Jay Boy says, Primanti Brothers, meet and greet. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, meet yeah, yeah. and greet. Meet. BP, you Americans <laughs> need a real game like rugby. No shoulder pads. There, there's that you know, my constant nephew, action. My, uh, rugby is quite popular in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Um, the women's six is... Well, we don't we have, have a professional really We don't have a team. professional rugby league. Or no, no. But but we play national and world and stuff. But yeah, my nephew is playing. It, it's playing. Rugby. It's played up to the university level. Yeah. We play up to the Olympic level. Well, and then we play um, uh, recreational league. I couldn't name a Canadian rugby player in the history of Canada's history. Well, I couldn't name. I can my nephew. I mean, <laughs> okay. You see what I mean? What's his name? I'll never forget what's his name. Juan, uh, great to see Auntie Jen and talking about the Steelers. I'm a 49ers fan, and it's been great lately oh, in the NFL. Beach go. Boy, NFL, what is that? What does it involve? Pies? <laughs> is there something to do with pies? Uh, I'm interested. It's the no food league. No, no, that's not true. There's no, a it's... lot of food. Um, it's the no fruit. No fruit. That could be. No fruit. <laughs> if, if it ain't barbecued, you you're not eating it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 We'll have to we'll have to check that schedule with the Steelers when they release it. And see what it's Oh, it's uh, already out. I'm sure it's already out. Where where they're gonna be and when they're gonna be there and see what we're what we're doing. There we go. Never there know. You never know. Maybe we'll rent an R V this summer and we'll tr we'll travel all over the United we States could go in an R V. See NFL in uh, in England and Germany. We we'll can we can go over there. We can watch. See? We can fly for. We can drag watch Splair football. to a football game. Grab Splair and take him to a football game. And explain it to him and have yeah. the people around. We'll make Splair kill pay. Us. We'll make Splair pay for it. Uh, hey, after we flew over here, Jr. Okay, I have dibs on bringing Levin Pie to our Southern California oh, meet and greet. How about okay. that? BB, uh, don't the 49ers convert. own a real team? Leeds uh, United <laughs> soccer to you Americans. Uh, don't they own that? Really? I mean, really? Uh, there you yeah. go. Okay. So, there we go. Okay. And again, soccer, the amateur and the recreational leagues of soccer, very popular here. We do have professional soccer, Canada, USA. Well, yes, yes we do true. have. It's true. Except well, there's there's those <laughs> diehard fans that do watch it, but it's not the majority of North Americans. In fact, Calgary has, I think, last year was their first year, and they did very well. Yeah, yeah. And <coughs> if 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 I think about it, I'll just phone everybody at three o'clock in the morning to tell them the name of the team. Well, isn't the World Cup of Soccer the next the next one is being shared between Canada and the U.S. I think there really? are there's five or eight. So games. is that out east? No, no, there's the games to be held in Vancouver. Oh. Uh, I don't think Calgary, though. Um, Edmonton, I'm not sure. Maybe. They probably Toronto, want closer Montreal. to the border. <laughs> like, there's the three cities for sure. Toronto, yeah. Montreal, Vancouver. Vancouver. Definitely will Because they have the soccer teams. 
Yeah. Well, and, and Vancouver has the indoor stadium right. with 65,000 yes. fans. They have a team. They have a stadium. Toronto has the big, uh, the the, big um, um, the pitch. sky dome. Right? Isn't it a pitch? A pitch. Okay. They play on a pitch. Montreal, I don't know where they'll play in Montreal. I don't know if they'll play an Olympic stadium. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's that so dilapidated they can't play there. I don't know. I don't I don't know the status. And I'm not sure if Montreal even hosts the game. I honestly don't know. Anyway, there you go. Um, uh, BP, uh, but you have World Series. Not only Americans, maybe Canada compete in. So how is this a World Series? Uh, yeah, we've always yeah. asked that question. Oh, well. Juan, there will be one game here at Levi's State. How is the State. Super Bowl the world champion? Yeah, how, is, how, are the, how are they the champions of the world if you're a Super Bowl champion? Come on, come on. Stephen, uh, do Canadians play cricket? Yes. Uh, oh, Olympic yes, Olympic level, but nothing beyond that. Um, yeah. We have in, in Calgary, we have, a, uh, again, a robust cricket league yes. um, because we have parks that have, again, yes. again, I think it's a pitch that are permanently set up and indoor we have as well that, as outdoor that English history. There's yeah. that too. They um, brought their bats. Well, and, uh, and the, the, we have a huge Pakistani and, and uh, Indian population in Calgary too, where they yes. love cricket. Flint Creek. Uh, if you RV, you can park here for a few days. We have land space and in the fall, great pies. Oh, See? so See? Uh Bobby, a uh, female rugby is big in eastern Ontario now. A small town, Smith yeah. Falls, had six high school ladies get accepted to Hobbit scholarships. How yeah. about that? The ladies six is it, oh, it's a big our deal. team is very good. Yeah, it's like on a world stage. Very yeah, good. big mm -hmm. deal. Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but it's not professional. It's you know goes right up to the top ranks of art of of, of amateur. Yeah, but we don't go. They go to the Olympics. They don't. They don't it. go to the bank. Men's too. Uh, yeah, they, they try to qualify for the yeah. world rankings every year. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should say our goodbyes. I think our visitors are on their way. Oh, good. Oh, excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm gonna say goodbye here. We're uh, we're on a little longer than usual. Let's go get a one more peek here at where things are at. Uh, before we say our goodbyes, uh, we've got six ninety five. We got Rocket Lab at uh, at four oh six and a half. We got uh, SoFi at six ninety four up uh, down nine. We got GameStop just down twelve cents. Matterport up about a dime here at one eighty seven. Um, down nine on Spire. ATIP down fifteen. Smart Rent down a penny. Apple's up four ninety six and. Um, uh, Google uh, has been rumored to be supplying Apple phones with AI. Uh, they're up 977. So these two stocks together are having a wonderful day right now. Goldman down 280. Cisco is up 68. Tesla doing well, up 822 at 171.90. Arc Innovations up a nickel. Microsoft up 316. Pfizer down 15. HPQ down 61. Amazon up 209. Nvidia up a big time, $25 today at 903. Uh, NVIDIA down 13 cents, AI up 7, Adobe up 11.80, back to 504 after that $77 drop. We're coming back like I figured. Uh, we've got Spiders up 520, Q's up 740, Netflix up 17 bucks, IBM uh, down 16 cents, Meta down $8, is up 813, Meta up 813, um, Vanek Semiconductors up 350, Home Depot down 36, Enphase up 128. Palantir up 26 cents, Uber down 110, and Coinbase down 525 to 237 a share. Uh, the markets, uh, looks like the Dow is holding a gain today of uh, 123. Uh, S&P is up 54, NASDAQ up 266. That's 1.67% for NASDAQ, but only 0.3 of a percentage point for the Dow. So the Dow is really, Strong. should be at 600 plus points on the upside. It's only up 120 but it is still a green session so far. Oil up 58 cents, and I'm sticking to the story there. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining us. Alberto says, bucket list travel, uh, RV, three months out of the year, minimum of a 30-footer through oh. with the pole centered in the living room. Ah, <laughs> yes, the pole. Uh, Bobby Atkins in Toronto has one of those World Cup games. We got me emojis oh. coming up from Richard and Honeybee. Uh, JR, hey, Rugman speaks this week. Um, BP, Italy beat Wales at rugby over the weekend. France beat England. There are these are world games, not in house games. Mando number right. five, neat, neat, neat. And good morning, Auntie Jen. Thank you, Mando number five. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today from wherever you are. Uh, we appreciate you. Go Thank you. Curling. We're, yeah, she said, watch curling. Thanks for the <laughs> thumbs ups today, everybody. Uh, the thumbs up meter now. 
294. We're going to break 300 here with rerunners for sure. Thank you all for helping out and um, have a wonderful rest of your session today. Make a bunch of dinero. Keep your eye on the channel. You never know when we do the next video. Otherwise, tomorrow morning, we'll be here. Look at that Adobe now, 505, almost 506. Nice. We'll be here tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock for Go Bagel members, 8.30 for all of you. The rest of you, come and join us. Let's see if we can help you make some more dinero writing options, following some of our favorites. Have a great day, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye from Palm Desert, from Bruce yeah. and Auntie Jen. Bye. Bye. That was so